Hello, hello, welcome to my show. Um, I'm Sonia. Okay, this is Imboss. This is a classroom. Okay, we're not gonna have any fun times here. This is a place for, for learning only. This is the English version of my presentation about nutrition. Okay, so first of all, I wanted to say hi to to the unicorn group hello hello to Sverige to all the people there amazing people really and um another group that is called raw primal Ashkenazis Jew Ashkenazis whatever that's the only people I have to say hi to and for whoever knows me you know um in my personal life so with that being said, I think I said everything. With that being said, let's filter out the people. This show is made for people that have a firm grasp and a firm control over their left side of their brain, which is the intellect, right? Which is the place where you store your data by letters, by alphabetically, numerologically, you know? And um, yeah, so I need you to listen. I need you to sit and listen just get the logic you know wrap it around your fucking brain and and shut the fuck up okay just listen just listen and argue later when when you should argue when um when you try the things that we're gonna talk about here today okay then only then you should argue okay not here not now N uh, not now so, uh, excuse me for any mistakes I make. English isn't my first language and it isn't my second language. So, excuse moi for that. I'm not a girl. If you had uh, any problem with that, you can just, you know, walk the fuck out. And um, again, my interest is that you listen to whatever the fuck is going on on this, this screen. Okay, you, you don't need to watch me. You can put a piece of cardboard on the screen, whatever. Um, if that's gonna make our relationship better, then that's gonna make it better. Um, yeah, so useful links are gonna be down in the description. If you have any personal requests, whatever, just comment. I'll, I'll try to be here for you as much as possible. Okay. Now, with that being said, 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 swed. I'm gonna I'm gonna welcome you to my um um to my meal to my daily meal to my table okay fork on the table I'm gonna welcome you to my table and um and and we're gonna watch Lear Keith a lady called Lear Keith who was a vegan for 20 years of her life she has a great book and we're gonna talk about this book later on later on and um let's uh, let's listen what she has to say i was a about her being a vegan for 20 years this is her i'm sorry about the brightness contrast whatever I'm, I'm i'm gonna try to fix it i have a new camera coming you know so this is the best i could do really i had a lot of mistakes in my hebrew presentation so this is the, um, the correction. I was a vegan for 20 years. I was half dead by the time I stopped. Eating that first bite of meat was, hands down, the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. It was horrible. And it had to be done. So what I would say to people who are faced with this, it was inevitable. This is not a diet that works long term for maintenance and repair of the human body. We are not a vegan species. Even the species that we think of as vegan are not vegan. So, for instance, a cow, you think, oh, she's a vegetarian. She eats grass. Actually, 10% of their diet is, is animal products because in that grass, they're eating tons of insects. And it ends up being 10% of their calories. Without those calories, they actually get really sick. They need that 10% to be from animals. And there's also, you can actually watch cows, deer, critters that we think of as either browsers or grazers, 
they have been seen eating things like small mammals and small birds. They will actually hunt them. They will eat them. So even the creatures that we think of as vegan are not really vegan. They're, they're actually getting animal products as well that are necessary for their, their physiological health. You listen to that? That's a message for any farmer here that, um, that doesn't know this information. Send this to him. Please, save the animals. Stop um, injecting vaccines and fucking giving them antibiotics, man. The, um, we need to give them the health that Mother Nature or Papa Universe or creation itself gave those animals, okay? The health, healthy status is already been created here, okay? We won't create anything new, believe me. The health? Health is already here. There's nothing new under the sun, okay? But all that aside, I know it's a very bad day. So the values that you hold, as if you, the values that drove you to, to embrace veganism, they're the correct values. It's love and compassion and uh, sustainability and a longing for justice. And anything that questions human hubris, I know you don't want the animals to get hurt. I, I really do know that. It's like, it was my dearest wish. It was my North Star. And the problem is, no matter what you eat, animals are dying. So you might think that it's vegan because it's a head of lettuce. And having grown lettuce, I can tell you, there are dead animals in that lettuce. There were animals that were killed to save that lettuce. Lettuce kills. So you could eat it, whether they were rabbits or deer or slugs. You know, or all kinds of insects, they all had to die. Um, on a larger scale, for that farm to be cleared, a whole bunch of animals had to be killed to make that farm to grow that lettuce. And beyond that, what lettuce wants to grow is healthy soil, and what soil is made out of is dead plants and dead animals. You're not going to grow good food without applying the amendments that plants want. That That's what soil is. You're going to have to apply manure. You're probably going to have to apply at some point bone meal and blood meal. Earth is a carnivore. You hear that? <clears throat> you hear that? Oh my god. My voice. What's happening? Oh. The minerals. And that's what's required to grow annual crops of any kind. Whether it's lettuce or wheat or whatever you want. Um, they can't get them on their own. Perennials can. Carnivore weed, anybody? Can get a lot of those. Uh, annual plants cannot. They don't have a deep enough root system. So I know, having grown my own food, I know what goes into it. And trust me, it was horrifying as a vegan to figure all this out step by step. I didn't like a single thing that I learned along the way, but it's reality and you are better off facing reality. You are better off bearing up under your adult responsibilities because living in a fairy tale is, is not going to help. So given that animals are going to die to feed you, these are our choices. There, there is no death-free option if you're a living creature. Other things are going to die to feed you. No matter who you are, whether you're a plant, whether you're an animal, whatever you are, creatures have to die for to live and that's a very very hard moment but you have to face it so you can do it well because our only two choices right now really forever our choices were only ever the death that is part of the cycle of life that improves the cycle of life that supports the cycle of life that makes it stronger and denser and lusher and then the other death is the death that's destroying all life and most of the foods that you're going to eat as a vegan are honestly those second foods because they're agricultural foods. And the question when you look at your on your plate isn't, is there something dead on my plate? Because it's all dead. The question is, what died to feed me? And if you're looking at agricultural foods, you're looking at the whole world. You're looking at the soil. You're looking at the rivers. You're looking at the aquifers. You're looking at 200 species a day. That's what died to get that food on the plate. <clears throat> the Arcade about her veganism again she has an, an amazing book called the vegetarian myth we're gonna talk about it later on okay she has the um, if you want to watch the full interview it's on samir dosani's channel okay it's like a 20 minute video and you should watch it now we're gonna watch oh yeah sorry 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 let me welcome you let me welcome you. Okay. This is my plate. We have minced meat. I can't see shit, man. We have minced meat. Okay. Which is 
pork, half pork, half beef. And we have here, here, yeah, boy. Here we have uh, beef, li beef liver, okay? Um, on the me minced meat, I have um, five yolks, okay? It's called steak tartare in, uh, in professional terms, okay? And this is this is my basic meal every day, except the liver. The liver I eat once a week because because makes you horny. It makes you um, you know it makes you do stuff that you don't really want to do all the time, you know. So now we're watching Pottinger's cat. This is an experiment of a dude who took cats. Okay, pretty healthy cats <clears throat> from the street and one group he fed them um, he, he took he, he did like three groups in the end or something never mind um, uh, the main thing is he took like two groups of cats one he fed like pasteurized milk cooked meat whatever and the other group he fed raw milk raw meat raw bones okay and um let us see the results let us see the results this is so fun guys Actually, to begin this is so fun i don't have to stop and translate every fucking thing that that is happening on the screen okay this is this is fun um this is probably gonna be a shorter um presentation than the hebrew one just because of this so don't be suspect that you missed on any info or something i was just translating shit to people. In the study, a population of animals was selected which Pottinger aptly dubbed run-of-the-pen cats. He was not interested in physical perfection. His major concern was that his cats represent a normal sampling of animals, with the exception that cats with obvious deformities or disease were excluded. Pottinger was intrigued by what he termed heat labile factors. He asked, does the cooking process somehow render food nutritionally deficient, causing eventual physiological degeneration? A basic diet was designed consisting of raw meat, viscera, bones, a small amount of raw milk, and cod liver oil. Each day, this basic diet accounted for one-third of the total dietary intake of the animals. The remaining two-thirds of the diet was the dimension of experimental manipulation. One group of cats received raw meat or cooked meat along with the basic diet. The other group of cats were given raw milk, pasteurized milk, evaporated milk, or sweetened condensed milk. Each cat's daily diet then consisted of one-third of the basic diet, plus two-thirds of the prepared food which was under study. And once assigned to a specific group, the animal's diet was held constant. Although there were two different studies, one focusing on milk and the other on meat, the results of both studies were nearly identical. Over the next 10-year period, Pottinger observed and recorded numerous physiological changes in the experimental animals and their offspring. First, you will observe the raw milk animals. They move about the pen with a great deal of agility and coordination. Look at their thickness also, the thickness, thickness of the fur, fur, thickness of the bones, you know. Notice the sheen to the fur and the normal sexual interest displayed toward the male in the next pen. As we A lot of women I know don't have any fucking sexual interest in nothing, man, nothing. Don't you want a man like, you know, like a, a big arm in your hand something i don't know no i'm just scared he's a good guy you should you know you should um flow with the guy he seems pretty good he's actually pretty cute blah 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 no i just think so ba, ba, ba. you're not even gonna try no i don't think so okay and a lot of guys too a lot of guys a lot of guys um we are not um we're not sexually active that much you know this is bad would be expected I they land on i wonder why on their feet when thrown in the air 
The pasteurized milk-fed cats, shown here, move about the pen in a manner quite different from the raw milk cats. The cat in the foreground actually developed arthritis during the experiment. So, okay. So they, pasteurized, they drank pasteurized milk, ate cooked meat, okay? And suddenly, we have a calf, cat with arthritis. We have a cat with arthritis. I wonder what what other animal in this world has arthritis? <laughs> they are lethargic, much like animals in a zoo. They're not wild anymore, man. When thrown a short distance, these animals show a slightly impaired sense of coordination. Dental deterioration was also common. Note the abscesses above the molars, the reddish cast of the gums, and the soft gingiva. Hey parents around the world, you, rem uh, you remember the day that you sent your kid when he was like fucking 12 to uh, get a surgery in his mouth because he had like tooth decay and another shit and then he doesn't have enough space in his fucking jaw to, you know, for all of his teeth um, and you thought it was normal? Well, it's not, okay, parents? Mom and dad, please, this is not normal. You're not, your kid does not suppose, he's not supposed to have these fucking things, okay? He's, he's supposed to be healthy, he's supposed to be strong, he's supposed to be happy, energetic, okay? Okay? Newsflash. With evaporated milk, there was even greater deterioration. When the study was begun, this cat was better developed than any animal shown thus far. The sweetened condensed milk fed cats not only had their milk heat processed, but there was the addition of sugar. Now look how thin they got, okay? Look how, how thin, thin this thing is. It's like, it's like he's doing this on purpose, man. They are nervous animals. Again, there is marked deterioration in coordination and dental abnormalities. Notice particularly the abscesses and the purple tone to the membrane of the mouth. For a further comparison, here is another example of normal development. Notice the firm gingiva, the normal coloring tones, the beautiful broad mouth, the full jaw with obvious power. This animal happens to be a male, but the comparison is nonetheless valid. Here is another illustrative comparison. The raw milk female gets in 20 or 30 licks for every one of the pasteurized milk female, then leaps away in disgust. So, okay. So, because they don't have a, even have the same cognitive level, Okay, they, they don't have the same fucking brain. Okay, they don't get along. They don't get along. Think about schools. Think about our children. Okay, they don't get along too. I wonder fucking why. Okay, while one kid is trying to play with you or cat or dog, whatever. If you raise dogs here, you know this one. You know, um, like the palm of your uh, of your hand. So, um, these cats are pretty much autistic and the healthy cats they're gonna try to play with you i'm gonna i'm i'm just trying to play with you and the autistic cat is like no man you're attacking me holy shit drama alert okay this is basically what's happening and if you hear my dog barking in the background that's okay i don't fucking care these were all first generation animals born of theoretically healthy parents and who themselves were healthy at the beginning of the study. Disturbing as these observations might be, the impaired balance, the lack of energy, the dental deterioration... Yeah, it made me laugh in the Hebrew episode too. Look, 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 look at this. ...might be, the impaired balance, the lack of energy, the dental deterioration. Some of the most significant findings emerged as Pottinger extended his study down to the second and third generations. 
Almost immediately, Pottinger noticed that animals fed the raw meat diet for two generations appeared larger than the same generation of cooked meat cats. At 16 weeks, this second generation raw meat cat weighs 2,000 grams, while the second generation cooked meat animal only comes up to 1,600 grams. And all of the idiots, idiots in the fucking um, in the um, audience, if I ever have one, um, they're gonna say, "Oh, it's genes, man! It's just genes. You were just born that way." No, it's not. No, it's not. Something governs genes. Okay, this experiment proves it. Okay, genes are just a stepping stone. Okay, they don't fucking conquer everything. Okay, it's not the the code of life. Things conquer it. Things dictate the genes. What things? Maybe we should um, watch a little more of this experiment. Compare the black kitten with this raw meat kitten. The sheen, the sparkle of the eyes, the well-developed face. This is a raw meat animal with the full round face. A later examination of the skull showed a firm... Look at here, man. Look at here, man. Oh, damn. Again. Again with this thing. Okay. Look at here. You see these rings? You see these eyeball rings? Okay. They're fully developed. Okay. The jaw is straight. And it's big. And it has room for all the teeth. Teeth, you know? Okay. Look at these. Look at these. It looks good. It looks like a hunter, right? Looks like a good, healthy hunter. They developed zygomatic arch. Zygomatic arch, okay? Sorry for the eye ring. Frontal sinuses were complete. And calcium content of the bones throughout the body ranged from 12 to 17% by weight. The skulls of adult cats with a long ancestry of raw food diets are surprisingly constant. Here we find the development of a second generation cooked meat animal. The head has begun to flatten and is actually smaller than the cup. Look at this. Go back on the video and compare the eye size to the skull size, you know? Look at this. Look at this. Scary shit, man. Scary shit, mama dada. Comparable raw meat cat. The skull shows the major reasons for this change. The zygomatic arch is not completed. The nasal development is somewhat irregular, and the calcium content has fallen to 10%. Have you ever heard of the term nose breather? Third generation mouth cooked meat. <laughs> mouth breather? Have you ever heard of the term mouth breather? This is, um, this is where it starts and how it starts. Animals show the most remarkable skeletal change. The skull is considerably smaller. It is flat with pointed features. The skull shows a poorly developed zygomatic arch. The bone... Look at that. The arch does not exist anymore. What do you mean poorly developed, man? Doesn't exist anymore. Literally. Literally. Not funny. <laughs> ...are paper thin and soft like sponge rubber. The frontal sinuses had developed in a peculiar fashion. Peculiar. And the calcium content of the bones had fallen to a low 3% by weight. Activity level is another index of interest. In this pen, there is an obvious difference in activity level between the raw meat animals and the cooked meat animals. One of these cooked meat kittens actually had a broken back resulting from a failure in development. Shit, a broken back from nutrition, who would have knew? Moving into the third generation of experimental animals, the degeneration was even more pronounced. The smaller animal is a cooked meat kitten, and is actually the oldest of the three. The kitten on the left is a second generation raw meat cat, and the one on the right... Damn. ...meat kitten, and is actually the oldest of the three. Compare his, um, snout, his, um, frontal bump here, okay? Compare his one to... Uh, compare his to... 
the 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 one on the right the cooked meat second generation something the kitten on the left is a second generation raw meat cat and the one on the right is a second generation cooked meat cat the snout it's like fucking here is a second generation cooked meat mother with her third generation offspring she has a male body configuration her offspring developed nasal and ocular allergies allergies okay from the same litter throat ear and nose you know the the channels are connected man and they have inflammation and disease and allergies and whatever and you think allergies is genetic right no it's fucking not man it's your w weakness to the environment via um um malnutrition how about that okay so mom and dads mamas and dadas here okay your children are not supposed to have these things not a broken back not a undeveloped uh, skull not a, a crooked teeth okay no uh, no gum disease no um no holes in your no tooth decay basically no nasal inflammation allergies sicknesses okay they're not supposed to take antibiotics they're not supposed to take vaccines okay it's all shit you can learn about it um if you haven't but it's all fucking shit it's all fucking pseudoscience we're gonna learn about it here not in not specifically in this episode but on the next episode but this is a really close related subject came an asthmatic kitten reportedly the first to be reported in the research literature again there is marked dent a cat with asthma i wonder what other animal has asthma in this world deterioration abscesses poor coloring and gingival irritation pronounced exhaustion was a typical observation among the third generation of cooked meat kittens as well as impaired coordination impaired coordination and exhaust exhaustion okay they're always fucking tired always fucking tired uh, finishing a six hour shift man coming home going to sleep forgetting about visiting your mom forgetting about your dog forgetting about you know these these are the chronically tired people this third generation cooked meat kitten had over look at this man this is so sad this is so sad in the hebrew episode i told i i, I said Pottinger should should have stopped this experiment right here because he's going to hail he's going to hail and he's gonna die 24 fractures resulting from a failure in development 24 fucking fractures man and finally this little third generation cooked meat kitten was unable to release its claws from the hardware cloth and probably would have died had not the assistant taken he would have died man if the assistant would have taken care of it okay take that as a note all the sick people we have here take that as an as a note okay your sickness is projecting onto other people and they need to suffer too so you will survive another day you know we're gonna talk about this later it down. at this juncture in the study a most interesting development emerged the cooked meat cats were unable to successfully reproduce after the third generation. Most were void of sexual interests, and those that had attempted to mate could only produce stillborn litters. Bruh, okay, third generation cooked foods couldn't even fucking give birth anymore. Mm -hmm. Because they weren't even sexually active from the beginning. And even those who were sexually active they give birth to like sick stillbirths whatever he told right now said right now okay this is really interesting because uh we're basically like second or third generation city dwell dwellers right cooked food whatever germ theory believers whatever you want to call it okay we are a third generation you know how uh um what percentage of our couples need medical intervention to actually give birth? You know how many? About 40% people. 40%. We can't give birth anymore. 
okay and even if we do they have crooked teeth they need surgeries they need pills they they need somebody who is going to release their fucking claws out of the mesh mesh because um they're gonna die autistic fucking children man these are autistic cats and we have autistic children okay and if if you're a, a psychiatrist or whatever if you go to his um if these people are gonna go to the psychiatrist he's not gonna say oh you're autistic okay he's not gonna put him on some spectrum or whatever it's not gonna be noticeable but it is okay it is it is on the other hand the raw meat animals continue to reproduce healthy offspring generation after generation the notion that specific nutritional factors in food may be destroyed by heat processing is obviously not far-fetched physiological deterioration down the generations is quite graphic and according to pottinger the process was found to be reversible only with great difficulty he did demonstrate that the animals could make considerable gains towards physiological normalcy, but it took four generations of a raw food diet before the animals regained their native structure and original level of well-being. An interesting sidelight came six months after the experiment's conclusion, when volunteer weeds emerged in the fallow pen. Volunteer weeds are we in California all of a sudden? In the raw milk pens, the plants flourished. In the pasteurized milk pens, the growth was somewhat less hardy. Plants in the evaporated milk pens struggled, and the sweetened condensed milk pen <clears throat> speaks for itself. So as Lear Keith told us on her um, previous video, uh, plants need meat. They need death, basically, if you want to look at it that way. At a later date, navy beans were planted in the respective pens with parallel results. And if it is true with human beings, as it is with cats, that nutritionally caused deterioration is passed down the generations, a sobering challenge stands before us. Now, I don't know why, why he has like comparison of cats and black people, but I think I do know actually um there's a book we're gonna talk about this book later or there's a guy who made a book um weston a price nutritional and physical degeneration okay that's how the the book is called and that's basically uh the uh, top leading um dental doctor or whatever in america at uh, in the year of 1890 something like that he traveled the world from um nine from the year from the year 1910 to 1917 something like that don't take my word for it um and he wanted to see why why the most um abandoned you know um isolated tribes <clears throat> had uh, so much health why did they have people who are like 80 fucking 90 years old and, ha and they don't have even one cavity one cavity not even a start of a cavity you know what i'm saying so yeah so he wanted to check this out and whatever and then he find out that all of the healthiest tribes ate 99 to 98 percent at least animal products okay and a lot of raw animal products that's um that's a point i want to get across to western a price if he's um listening somehow and um so yeah so he has pictures there of like uh, you know tribal people black people uh, eskimos he went all over the world right he has uh, pictures of comparisons comparisons between like two brothers or even two twin brothers two twin sisters these are experiments we're not gonna do ever the science world isn't gonna do these experiments okay uh, it's on it, it they're never they're never gonna take two people okay two brothers and 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 make everything the same for them except one factor you know which is one eats meat and the other eats plants or whatever and then we follow them until the rest of their lives you know so 
um so basically he has their uh, pictures comparisons with like brothers who one uh, one brother uh, stayed in the tribe in the in the in the group okay stayed on his natural diet his um primal diet and the other brother went to the city you know to eat to eat sugar and flour and honey and and, and and candy, right? And condensed milk, pasteurized milk, right? And he has like comparisons of these two brothers or sisters or whatever, or just two different people that one lived in the in a, in the tribe and the other in, in the city. So, and you can see obvious fucking differences. One has crooked teeth, the other doesn't. One has two decayed, the other doesn't. One can get up in the morning you know, um, fucking uh, get a tree stump on his fucking shoulder and um, and um, start working and whatever. And the other one can't get up and he's cranky and he's whatever. You should read the book. We're going to talk about it later. This is the end. This is the end. Okay. So why did I just sh why did I just show you uh, showed you um, a clip about? God damn it. A clip about um, cats being unhealthy by cooking their food. Why? Because you are kind of a cat. Okay. So let's start our presentation. Right now. Okay. <clears throat> Why should I take care of my health? This is a question I get from a lot of people that you talk uh, talk to them about their health, you know? A lot of people go around every day and complain like, oh, I have a fucking headache, oh, I have a whatever, I can't get up in the morning, I, my period hurts, my bone hurts, I need a doctor, I need somebody to take the responsibility of my fucking health and body. And do something with it because I can't do shit. I'm a fucking loser. Okay, why should I take care of my health? My health belongs to me and is not related to anyone else. This is when you when you when you give those people uh, a solution. When you actually give them a solution, yeah, um, they don't want to hear a solution. They they're uh, most of these people are people that are, they just want to hear another person say that they have the same problems, you know, and they're just gonna sit there and cry and, you know, um, dry each other's tears and pet each other, you know, that's what they want to do. They want to, they don't want to hear a solution. So when you, when you give them a solution and when they realize that they need to actually fucking do something, then they need to fucking actually take responsibility for their own health, yeah? That's when they say, my health belongs to me and it's not related to anyone else. You fucking egotistical piece of shit. Listen here, bud. Because you're not alone in the world, okay? Why should you take care of your health? Because you're not fucking alone in the world, okay? Nobody has fun when we... we okay, we're a tribal fucking animal, okay? We're a group animal, social animal. It's not fucking nice to anyone. When we have a crazy idiot who has like i don't know uh, behavioral issues and he and he has gut issues and he has health issues and and every time we eat whatever he doesn't you know what i'm saying every time we wake up and start working he doesn't work you know what i'm saying every time our body's chemistry is a his body chemistry is d man you know okay every time he's stupid somebody's gotta be smart for him right okay so take that into consideration please because you're not alone in this world you're not alone whatever you're doing whatever you're how you look how you smell whatever you need also you need to set an example right to other to other people to kids right you need to set a fucking example right right and what are you doing i don't care about anything where's my fucking popcorn Netflix <laughs> and and their children are doing the fucking same man this is the example uh, they're fucking crazy egotistical they really they really are deeply fucking retarded okay change begins from within 
<clears throat> all change begins from within okay you can't change shit outside without changing yourself first in whatever matter it is okay so change begins from within this equals to your suffering is being reflected onto you onto your surrounding just what we said a minute ago okay these people somebody needs because they suffer so much okay because they suffer so much that's the only thing they they can give they, that's the only thing they can reflect onto onto your surroundings right do you understand okay if i don't ha let's put it in other words if i don't have any change to give i won't give any change you know if i don't have any health to give energy and helping people and whatever if i don't have any health to give okay i can't give any health if all i have is anti-health you know if, if all i have is illness right that's all i'm gonna give that's all everybody's gonna see and hear and smell from me right so take that please into consideration okay you egotistical pieces of shit uh, if you don't have self-respect you can't give out respect to others okay you don't have self-respect you can't give out respect to others okay the important it's the same thing if you don't have change you can't change if you don't have health you can give health you know if you don't have five cents to give you can give me five cents right exactly the same logic exactly the same fucking logic okay it works exactly the same way if you have suffering that is the only thing i can give if i have if i only have suffering that's the only thing i can give is that understood suffering people is that understood we love you but you need to fucking love yourself first okay if somebody beats you up and you're gonna just lay there and, and take it nobody's good you don't even fucking get surprised if nobody's gonna help you don't even fucking get surprised if you just lay there and take whatever anyone else is you know forcing upon you <clears throat> okay so now we're gonna go through a list what list a list of pains Priz, please 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 um spread this to anybody anybody who has any type of pain please they 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 uh, they need to hear the truth okay everybody deserves to hear the truth at least once in their lives okay even if it's from a fucking transsexual whatever on, on the internet that's, that's smoking cigarettes whatever man they need to hear the fucking truth okay okay so everybody who has headaches joint pain bone pain okay that's all the arthritis is here all the uh, whatever uh, inflammation okay whenever whenever inflammation dry skin okay skin skin is made out of what collagen cholesterol you know saturated fats you know hair problems okay if you have like dry hair or it's thinning or every time you brush it you have like a clump of fucking hair that's not normal that's not normal. google will tell you it's normal it's not fucking normal hair problems okay yeast or fungal issues this is for all the girls here smelly feet or smelly body body sweat or or the odor okay so, um this is for all the people that take off their shoes and then oh sorry sorry haha <laughs> my my legs they they smell okay you you don't know what sorry is you fucking idiot okay i'm sorry <laughs> but you don't know what fucking sorry is you need to do the sorry okay you need to um actionize the sorry you understand okay you can't just is believe think no you're sorry and just and just feel yourself you need to do the sorry okay and what am i saying here you need to fucking stop eating shit okay and get healthy and then you will say sorry okay but just saying sorry and then hoping nobody will whisper too much that's not sorry that's autistic children's sorry stomach aches okay any fucking stomach problem back pain okay period pain girls your your period is not supposed to hurt okay let me tell you this again your period does not supposed to hurt okay 
try me try me digestion problems okay heartburn okay hemorrhoids adhd okay attention def hyper whatever okay all of the people that there are saying no it's normal it's not a disease my kid is just whatever it is a disease if he can't fucking focus on something if he can't control his focus that's a disease okay that's something this ease okay that's not easy it's, it's not easing on his life which means it's a disease sleeping problems okay as uh, problems with waking up okay heart problems everybody here has heart problems please hear he hear he paranoia or fears hey man can you walk me home i'm scared there's like fucking black people everywhere Pro Paranoia or fears, okay? Problems with respect, uh, repeating the same mistakes over and over, okay? This, I, I could have just written this phrase on this whole slide and it will uh, encompass everything that's on here. Problems with repeating the same mistakes over and over, okay? Memory problems, okay? Problems with motor skills, okay? Everything, everybody that's, you know, uh, something fell on my hand or I forgot my phone on my whatever and then I moved it and and it broke okay sick every year people that are sick every year okay stop being you you're not you I don't know man try it try it man I try that food 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 I didn't I wasn't uh, um, when I switched to only meat I was like on cooked meat for for a year and a half something like that and every year, every year prior to that, every year in my life, I would get sick, okay? I would get, like, at least um, a sore throat and, 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 and like, um, mucus and shit. And, and sometimes, like, every, once every two years, I would get, like, a, an actual fever, okay? Fever with the sore throat and a, a dry lips. Dry lips was every year, okay? And after a year and a half on cooked meat okay uncooked meat year and a half on that um uh, 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 i i stopped getting the sore throat and then i only got dry lips and i was like okay well let's continue this on now tfu, tfu, tfu. nothing man nothing i i didn't i nothing energy problems energy problems or feeling tired uh, we talked about that in the cats uh, video abandonment abandonment issues okay abandonment issues depressions okay and manias manias depressions okay the people that one day they're they're gonna say wait sorry sorry not sorry so one day they're gonna say um oh yo man i have this cool idea we're gonna print shirts or whatever and we're gonna sell it and whatever and I have the best designs in the world and, blah, 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 blah. and then like I, uh, if not a couple of hours later like a day later or two later they're gonna be like oh no, hey man what's up what about your idea man the the shirts the designs the whatever oh no man it was a stupid idea it was a, a heat of the moment kind of thing manias depressions okay Productive, uh, reproductive problems talked about it today. Social relationship problems, a big one, a big one. People who can't, who can't figure other people out. Okay? They are always fighting with people, always. And it's not like a, it's not like a, it's not like a intellectual uh, argument, you know, when you both like put intellect on the table. No, no, it's a personal argument. You always blah blah blah, and you always blah blah blah. It's a pointless, stupid, childish argument. Social relationship problems, a lot of people have them. Vitamin or mineral deficiency, eyesight problems, okay? You can see from uh, far, you can see from, um, from close, from up close, okay? Do whatever we are talking about here today, and you're gonna see, literally. Problems with getting fat. Okay, problems with g being thin, okay, if you're too fat or too thin, too thin, okay, if, if you're a man and you don't have, like, fucking muscle on you, that's a problem. Autoimmune problems, all the autoimmune people here, okay, you have leaky gut, you have a syndrome that is called leaky gut, undigested particles are going directly into your, into your blood flow and your immune system, um, and you're doing it daily, okay, you eat shit daily, okay, and your immune system, um, basically said, 
well, okay, I'm gonna start attacking these things and I'm gonna remember these things, especially proteins, okay, undigested proteins. And then what happens? He, he finds that protein or that structure or whatever, however they work, okay? He finds that structure, uh, structure in another tissue of your body and he starts attacking that tissue, okay? How do you mean problems? Welcome. You have a solution. Believe me, you all have a solution. Mental health problems, of course, the biggest one here, mental health, all the mental health problems, okay? This is memory problems, this is ADHD, this is the little things, okay? And the big things like schizophrenia, like epilepsy, like, you know, um, yeah, I think we said it all. Anyone that ever told you that your problem is genetic or has no solution, lied to you, lied, okay? Lied to you. The truth is, if somebody can be healthy, you can be healthy. And we're gonna talk about this right now. The truth. The truth. First of all, let me define the truth to you. Because a lot of you don't have any, even a definition to what truth is. Okay, So let me define this to you. Truth. What is truth? Truth is a set of rules that are governing this reality okay these these are a set of rule a set of rules that were created here before us okay this is not something i can argue about it's not my personal opinion okay these are rules that were created here these rules govern why what i what i'm thinking right now okay how i feel and why is this show here why is this camera on that floor you know what i'm saying okay and it also governs where does the wind blow and how fast does it blow right now okay and how fast something falls in whatever substance pressure or, or, or atmosphere you know the truth the set of rules okay the truth okay and now i'm gonna teach you a big lesson for life for life please listen here okay believe me this is info un Un, uh, uh, priceless, priceless, man. This is priceless info. Okay, just listen here. How to distinguish the truth from a lie? Okay, a truth from a lie. Very easily. You don't need any fucking doctors, no experts, no graphs, no numbers, nothing. Okay, listen here. The truth. Okay. Hey, Sonia, this thing, this thing right here um it's a uh, it's an ashtray right you can put your ash right here and then you can press this button and this button it's actually a cylinder that's going through another cylinder okay and it has a spring in it okay so every time you press it the spring pops back up the uh the button okay and not only that the cylinder is uh, uh, it has a spiral spiral structure inside of it right so not only that it that does the spring push it back it also spins the tray right and it flushes the um it spreads the um god damn it man the ash into the ashtray okay so this is truth what did i get from this truth okay what did i get from this truthful information about this about reality about this object in reality okay first of all i got freedom <coughs> freedom right because now i know how it works i know it's an ashtray i can i am free to use it i know this a hundred percent okay knowledge is freedom truth truth will set you free right exactly this okay i'm free to know now okay what else did it give me give me it gave me responsibility okay it gave me responsibility because now now i'm responsible if even if you're the laziest person ever you are now responsible for this you know how to fix it you know how it works right right so now you have responsibility so you got responsibility you got freedom okay okay and you can do it yourself. Responsibility, it basically goes in into between the lines there. Between the lines of responsibility. You can do it yourself. The truth is, if you can do it, anybody can do it. That's the truth, okay? Why? Because the truth is one. 
it's one okay there's no oh sometimes this something that no no it's one and it works every fucking time okay on everybody okay on every human okay especially nutrition this is for the people who are oh you should eat uh, differently because you have a different marker in your blood because the particle that we found in your blood it um it uh, it filters out through a special filter and that means and it stays in the special field and that and that means that you need to be vegan and another person need, needs to be a carnivore no no okay the truth is one if you haven't noticed um this is just a short one for all these people who are saying these things um if you haven't noticed in nature even um species that are not the same fucking animal eat the same need to eat the same i mean like a cat and a wild cat and a tiger and a puma and a lion right they'll need to eat the same fucking food uh, uh a dog right uh 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 shiatsu okay uh, uh, uh you know how is it called small dogs whatever mutated small midget dogs supposed to eat what a big dog or a rottweiler should eat okay and he should eat, he should eat what a wolf eats okay not the same animal but they eat the same and you're trying to say to me that we as humans need to eat something else because our skin color is different or our eyes are closed in another fashion you know or open so the truth is one okay so the truth so what it, it it gave me it gave me freedom right it gave me responsibility okay this is in my, this is in my hands i can do this i can fix this i can understand this okay truth is one lie what is a lie hey sonia hey sonia listen here sonia this this thing yeah what does it do this thing it opens up your garage really yeah it opens up your garage Okay, can I try it? Yeah, sure, go ahead. The garage didn't open. What the fuck happened? Oh, well, actually, it opens the, gra the garage once in a while, you know? And not only that, uh, not only that, yeah? Um, you're not responsible for it, right? Because it opens up once in a while you're not responsible for it it doesn't work every time it the truth is one it doesn't work every time yeah it works sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't actually you know what we are responsible for if it's gonna work or not okay so what did the lie take from me it took from me responsibility right because now somebody else the, you're, you're telling me no it doesn't work every time you can't understand this okay this is a matter of just luck by chance okay the truth doesn't have chances okay the set of rules here doesn't have chances okay chances or luck whatever you call it whatever you like to call it is just um they're just uh, phases of a uh, cause and effect that you didn't calculate in your head beforehand so you say oh shit that surprised me yeah because you didn't know the steps okay of the cause and effect this world works on cause and effect okay you didn't calculate these cause and effect steps and that's why you call it chance or whatever there's no chances there's no chances the truth is one there's no chances okay these are rules that govern the this place okay um so yeah the truth is one so what did it take it for me it took responsibility and it took my freedom because now i'm a stupid person i think this shit opens my garage not only that is it does it open it my garage it opens it once in a while and not only that somebody else is responsible for that shit okay truth and lie lie uh, lies take responsibility give it gives it to somebody else okay it tells you you can't do this you can't do this you can't understand this okay and it takes away your freedom because now you're not knowledge is power um truth will set you free you know so it took your freedom and the truth gave you freedom gave you responsibility okay <clears throat> if you want to look at it objectively the truth is like a sword okay here protect yourself 
but also, you know, protect others and whatever. It's like a sword. It's like, here, have yourself some responsibility, you know, and freedom, protection, you know? So, truth and lies. And you should, um, and you should compare these two examples to what's happening in our world right now okay which uh, you you should you should ask yourself who's telling you the truth who's telling you that it's all in your hands okay if one person can be healthy you can be healthy okay there's no chances okay it's all in your hands you're responsible be a big boy okay and who's telling you the lies who's telling you no, it's not in your hands it works sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't right Actually, it's our responsibility. It's not your responsibility. It's our responsibility. We can make you healthy. It's not something you can do on your own. We can make you healthy, right? Give us your time. Take our drugs, whatever, you know? Taking your freedom, taking your responsibility. So, think about that for a minute. The truth is connected to us, to us all, and every creature or thing in this world, okay? The truth can be discovered by creatures who have sufficient enough self-awareness, okay? Very simple. Let's start this slide. Finding the truth as any correct learning process is like a rocky passage, okay? To find the truth, you need to follow three steps. Okay. Every correct learning process starts with a belief, action, and then understanding. Let's let's imagine that uh, this is this is the um, this is the path. The left side is where you start the path, and the right side is where you finish the path. Now there's a lot of rocky, uh, ro wet, wet, rocky, musky, whatever. Um, rocks okay and they're loose some sometimes they're firm sometimes they're loose you don't know if you're gonna step on the first rock or and fall or maybe you're not gonna fall maybe you can take the next step right so every correct learning process starts with belief right because you you start with i i believe i can uh, put my feet on this rock and take the next step right so i start with belief then I need to do action. I need to take action, right? After the belief. And only then, and then understanding, okay? And only then I can understand. You cannot skip, skip these steps, okay? You cannot believe and then understand. There's no such thing as that. Unless um, you, you follow modern religions that tell you this. If you believe, then you understand. No, you need to take action. Okay, and only then you can understand, okay, realistically, okay, by the rules of truth, okay, this is how it works, this is how you fucking understand, the only way, there's no skipping. So, these are the people that are sitting at the, at the beginning of this rocky passage, and what are they, what are they saying? They're saying, I believe, I don't believe. Or in other words, a boo boo baba. Okay, they're just fucking crybabies. In the in the beginning, all of the people that ever argued with me about this diet without ever fucking trying any fucking diet, or this diet specifically. Okay, you are fucking losers, man. You are crybaby fucking losers. Okay, sitting here arguing with a fucking transsexual that eats raw meat. What the fuck, man? Try it out. Try it out. Then argue fucking uh, the most manliest man we have in these years okay and these are the people that made the passage made the they they did the action right and they understood and what are they saying they say hey man i acted i tried and now i know right i don't need to believe anymore right so Basically, what we have is the losers on the left side, and we have the winners on the right side. Can't believe I'm actually making a slide on this topic, okay? Basic, basic stuff. So let's start. The, the, there's a huge agenda in the world when it comes to nutrition, okay? If you haven't realized it yet, folks. We live in a world full of agendas, okay? And the nutrition world is an agenda, 
okay they have an agenda they don't care about your nutritional status they don't think they don't care about your health okay they care about cash as any other major topic uh, topic in our monopolized system nutrition is a business okay it's a business the your school is a business okay the bridge they built near your house is a business okay the church is a business okay everything in this world it has an agenda it is a business okay you need to stop start waking up to these things the point of the business is to make profits and to keep making profits okay the business needs to convince the client that he needs the product in any way possible, i.e. pay stati uh, statisticians or doctors to build or support a study that supports your claim, okay? They take doctors, they, they take stati uh, statisticians, okay? Sorry for my accent here or wording, phrasing, whatever, um, uh, they pay them to actually support a study, okay? And then you see a study and then you see like, oh, 20 doctors signed this. Wow, this is so great. I'm, I, I must believe that I, I don't need to check out what they objectively, uh, physically, mechanistically did in the study. No, I don't need to check that. I, I just need to check the list of doctors that signed on it and, and, and got a bonus check from it, right? right or bonus sponsorship or whatever okay and another another good phrase that is related to this uh, paragraph which is whoever's order uh, whoever orders the um the um um whoever orders the you know you're, you're trying to fix up your uh, your apartment whoever's whoever orders the materials for that fixation sorry for my lexicon poor lexicon um he orders the materials also so okay so they they basically make studies with built-in um uh, conclusions pay socially famous people to support the product uh, the product there this is all of youtubers and facebook fucking idiots that oh look at me i'm a, i'm a vegan i'm a paleo whatever they are getting paid for that shit they're getting sponsors they're getting ads okay you should um you should stay away from people that are they that have agendas for making money put addictive substances into the product and turn the client into the uh, into a junkie of the product okay this is all of your sugars your um your carbohydrates your fibers okay uh, and, and other uh, addictive materials that they put into their products block or censor or hide any information that goes against the product okay so the next time you meet a person that says he needs no learning other than a Google search, know that he is the perfect consumer, okay? He is a voluntary slave. Literally, voluntary slave. Just give me, just, please, hey, experts, oh, oh, people who are smarter than me, please, can you give me the answers on a golden plate? Of course, yeah, here you go. Broccoli is healthy for you. Vaccines are good okay voluntary slaves remember the human is the only animal that thinks that the term omnivore means he can eat it all okay this is um this is a famous guy over here we all know this guy and he doesn't he doesn't have to be fat okay and messy like here okay the, my point uh, to make here is that the term omnivore means uh, to you to humans it means that you can eat it all it doesn't mean that you can eat it all every animal has a species specific diet okay like a bear needs to eat raw salmon and like other small animals i don't know and sometimes you can find an apple or or berry berries or a honeycomb or whatever you know but it doesn't eat at all he doesn't fucking pick seeds from plants and boils them in water and then powders them and then puts it in a fucking oven it doesn't do that okay no animal eats it all except you fucking idiots so what do you think you are eating my man fruits and vegetables okay these are these things okay most of these things were created Okay, and genetically modified so you can 
actually eat them. Okay? Wild carrots are poisonous. And you're either gonna get poisoned or die from eating a wild carrot. What did they do? They genetically modified it into a big piece of sugar and fiber, which still has that poison, by the way. Okay, but less. Um, a big piece of sugar and fiber, and what do you do? You blend it to a, to a juice and, you know, and give it to your fucking kids. Thinking that there is vitamin A in there, right? Apples were like these small little sour things that had a lot of seeds in them, okay? They weren't this big sugar bomb that they are today, okay? So fruits and vegetables. Man-made. Even, even fucking animals that eat... Um, uh, herb herbivores, uh, uh, animals that actually have the system to digest plant material, even they get sick if they only eat fruits and vegetables. By the way, they need to eat something specific for them. Hmm, I wonder. Plant seeds, okay? These are plant seeds. These are not munchies. These are not um, crisps. These are not nothing, man. These are plant seeds, okay? The most poisonous part of the plants, okay? Powders and refined products, which is sugars, which is your flowers, which is whatever you take from the fruits and vegetables or plant seeds, powder it up and heat it up and cold it up and electrify it and then you, you fucking, you nuke it with some radiation or whatever and turn it into a powder, okay? Even worse than the plant seeds and the fruit vegetables themselves. IMO. In my opinion. Okay? These are um, milk powders, these are protein powders for all the men that work out here and whatever. Stay away from these things, please. This is heart disease, this is liver disease. Please stay away from these things. We're gonna talk about them a little bit later on, but you should stay away from these things, please. And of course, we have the sadomaso, sadomaso of all of these things, which is uh, the breads, the pastas, the the powders that we took and then we processed them even fucking more okay and called it food for some fucking reason okay everything that is in this fucking um slide okay it, this is slave food this is slave food historic historically historically this is slave fucking food okay while in the castle they were eating caviar and steak tartare and they had like a fucking pig on a plate right with an apple in this fucking um mouth right the peasants were growing their fucking lettuce and e eating the lettuce thinking it's gonna you know g give you fucking smart strong children or some shit oh god damn it and then they give birth to autistic idiots this structure does not govern the diet of an animal the, di 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 the digestive tract does okay you know this picture over here, a very, a very, very famous picture. I was, uh, I was in a time like ten years ago. I would believe this picture. Okay, I was like, yeah, yeah, sure. You can look at the teeth, and then, then you know what the animal needs to eat, right? But you can know everything from animals' teeth. No, no. Okay. Otherwise, squids, or okay, octopi. Should have eat, uh, should eat um, um, uh, nuts and seeds, right? Because they have a beak, right? They don't swallow their fucking prey whole and they di and then digest it in their fucking st stomach acids, right? No, 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 no. They need to eat seeds because they have a beak, right? I once had a conversation with a guy about this. He, he said to me, "Oh, you know, you can you can know everything with uh, uh, about the uh, the species diet via looking at their teeth." So I explained to him, "There's like octopus or fish or whatever," and he what what does he tell me? But sea creatures don't count. And I said, "Okay, Mister, I invent a theory, and then I need to, <clears throat> you know, and then I need um." to support it with sticks or whatever how about pandas pandas they're not sea creatures they have every fucking um uh, criteria of a hunter right they have claws they have fucking the teeth are there right what do you eat what do they eat all day my man bamboo 
bamboo, kangaroo also, another land animal, has the, all the characteristics of a carnivore, of a hunter. What does he do? Eat plants all day. Okay? You can't know everything from the animal's teeth. Okay? Sorry. It's like finding a pebble on a fucking shore and saying, oh, yeah, I know exactly where this came from. We don't know what the f where the fuck it came from. Nobody fucking knows, okay? Nobody fucking knows. In Google, they'll tell you, yeah, we know, yeah, it's a magnetic uh, magma cool down where it's fu fucking bullshit. You don't know shit, my man. You don't know shit. You can't prove shit to me, okay? We don't know what a fucking pebble on a beach is, okay? Very important point here. The digestion tract governs what the animal eats. Every species has a species-specific diet, okay? This is the cow. Let's talk about the cow for a little bit, okay? This is the cow. Let's talk about the cow, okay? The cow. It starts eating grass, right? It's eating grass and bugs. As Lierke told us, right? She eats bugs and a little bit of bugs, but mostly she eats grass. She swallows that grass and it goes to a little pocket right here. I thought it was right here, but it's right here in this um, picture, in this demonstration. So um, she swallows the grass. The grass goes into this pocket. In this pocket, she um she actually she keeps the grass okay she chews it for a hundred times if not a thousand times okay then she swallows it and then she regurgitates it back and then she chews it again and then she swallows it and then she regurgitates it and then chews it again okay i'm trying to i'm trying to open your eyes on how hard it is to get nutrition from fucking plants from uh, cellulose okay from plant um cell membrane okay so eats it swallows it eat, uh, swallows it regurgitates uh, bites it <laughs> chews it a little more swallows it whatever then it goes into the first and the second stomach what happens in the first and the second stomach okay she uh, uh, there, there. She has like tons of fucking bacteria bacteria that are there, that are waiting for this grass for this chewed up blended up plant material okay to go into the first and the second stomach okay in the first and the second stomach she the the, the germs they turn the cellulose into fatty acids okay and saturated fat they turn the cellulose into fatty acids and saturated fat for who for the cow what does the cow eat what do, does she absorb in the first two? Saturated fat. What, the, what does she produce in there? Saturated fat, okay? And fatty acids. Very important, okay? In the third and fourth stomach, do you know what, what, what does she digest? She releases stomach acids three times weaker than our, uh, three times weaker than our um, stomach acids. And what does she, does she digest? She digests the germs okay raw meat she digests the germs protein raw protein and enzymes and other things okay so what does the cow eat my man what does she eat does she eat plants or does she eat animals okay and later on later on it travels to her small in intestine okay uh, small intestine and then it goes to the large intestine the large large intestine is really large in a cow okay it's big it has a big surface um area whatever um you can put your whole hand in her fucking large intestine and all she will do is like look at you in the that's it that's it try do this to yourself okay large intestine huge Take that into account, okay? Does the cow eat grass? Not exactly, okay? Welcome to the world, people. Welcome to the world. Good morning. Okay, this is a picture I wanted to show you of a cow's or a sheep's stomach from within. Look at this. Look at this bacterial sponge they have there, okay? You don't have 
anything like that anything okay if you ever if you ever uh, looked at a cow's cheeks from the inside okay the cheeks have these little fingers it already starts from her cheeks the bacteria is already living in her cheeks okay you don't have anything like that anything anything and by the way do you know how much the cow digests from this the 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 shit that she shits you know how much is digested from that shit 40 percent 40 percent if you ever saw a cow or a buffalo or a camel or a horse take a shit in the middle of a desert it's gonna grow flowers out of it okay because it's undigested it's fucking fertilizer okay uh, on top of it all but it's undigested with all of these systems she digests only 40 fucking percent take that into account please okay with all of these systems and these systems the, the digestive system of primates and humans compared okay this is a comparison bef between an orangutan and a human orangutan on the left and a human on the right okay so let's see some different oh, oh, I, yeah let's see some differences here okay so Let's start from the beginning. Let's start from the beginning here. Okay, so let's start from the um, orangutan. Now here we have the stomach. Okay, the orangutan eats or the human eats. Okay, whatever. Orangutan and monkeys they eat meat and they eat plants. Mostly they, some monkeys eat more meat than others. Some eat more plants than others. Whatever. Right? Orangutans they eat pretty much a lot of um, plants, but they also eat a lot of bugs, a lot of birds. You know um so yeah so it, they ate so let's say they ate like plant material and animal material right so they ate it it goes into the stomach stomach has some ph whatever it digests the raw meat only okay cooked meat does not digest the same okay take that into consideration uh, you saw it with the cat video you can search about it on the web on the web there is a scientist called alexander uglov he did a raw frog leg experiment something like that you can find this uh, uh, all over the internet okay raw meat digest perfectly and bones digest perfectly in stomach acids okay we're gonna watch it later on so it's gonna digest the meat right the cellulose the plant material material won't digest right so then it goes into a, the small intestine intestine okay the small intestine what what is it good for the small intestine is long for protein and fat absorption okay protein and fat absorption now this comparison is really bad because the orangutan actually has half the length okay in size of our small intestine what is the small intestine for for protein and fat absorption we as humans have the longest fucking uh, small intestine from all fucking primates okay like compared to our body size we have the longest one this is the this is uh, this representation is shit we're gonna uh, show another one later but take into consideration humans have a huge a long small intestine for protein and fat absorption okay orangutans don't but they do have the small intestine okay intestine intestine now it goes through the small intestine which absorbs the protein and fat okay and then it co it comes to the large intestine okay what do we have here in the orangutan uh, orangutan right we have the cecum which is this part here Okay, right. the uh, the The small intestine is connecting to the uh, large intestine, right? And we have the um, it goes down, like in a human, it goes down. But here in the orangutan, they have a cecum. They have a pocket over here. Pocket for what? Pocket for bacteria. What bacteria that can make the cellulose into fatty acids and um. Uh, 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 saturated fat right so and then not only the cecum they have this little snake over here which is not existent in our fucking guts actually okay they have this which is what 
which is the appendix. So we call it an we call it an appendix, right? In our in our case, because it's like small and it's almost not existent, like in what in carnivores in not not carnivores in the hyper carnivores like tigers and lions they have the same thing as we okay the same size appendix as we do okay we have no germs in this in the large intestine that's what i'm trying to say here we have almost no germs there it's supposed to be pretty much sterile okay you as you can see here okay so the orangutan ate it ate it you know and then the plant material is being digested with the bacteria because the only thing that can digest it and turn it into nutrition is bacteria, okay? So the bacteria turns into... This is where your farts come in, okay? This is where your f fermentation comes in, okay? Okay? Or in other words, this is where, um, this is where um, the food rots, undigested food rots literally okay this is for every vegan that says that meat rots in the stomach no it doesn't no it doesn't not in our stomach not in our stomach okay so it goes down down there and the large inte intestine is short and has no surface area in our case but in the monkey's case in the orangutan's case in uh, another her herbivore or another animal that is built to actually eat plants Okay, not the case in them. They they have a lot. Their large intestine 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 is actually large. Okay, it's actually large. It's it's actually built for all of these gases and fermentation. Okay, and with those gases and fermentation, they get nutrition. Something you don't. Okay, vegans. Okay, um, <clears throat> veggie eaters. And these are arrows I made. I don't think they're really worth anything after this explanation, but you get the, the point. And now we will watch a video. Finally, 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 finally we'll watch a video. Finally we'll watch a video. So this is a video about gut types. Okay, we're gonna see it right now. So, so have you have a large gut? <gasps> Have we got a large gut? Well, no. Quite the reverse, in fact. Using Kleiber's law, we find that our gut is actually much smaller than would be expected in an animal of our size. Our stomach, for example, is only about a third as big as would be expected. Our small intestine is only three quarters, and that's where most of the food is uh, absorbed. Our cecum is practically non-existent. You can see it there. We, we call it an appendix about the size of a little finger. And our colon is only just over half what would be expected. Now all of these values are considerably less than one. Now this is particularly obvious in the case of the cecum. The cecum is part of the gut between the small and large intestines which is present in all mammals but with differing sizes depending on the mammal's natural food supply. Hindgut digesters um, like the gorilla have a large cecum hosting billions of bacteria which break down plant materials such as cellulose. Exclusive carnivores whose diets contain little or no plant material have a much smaller cecum often partially or wholly replaced by the vermiform as it's called appendix. Okay so apex predators in nature have an appendix okay not a cecum it's an appendix but basically you can just call it an appendix. An appendix is a non-existent cecum, basically, okay? So, apex predators in nature have the same configuration of intestine as we do. And this is the case in humans. This is quite obvious when we compare the gorilla with the man in the picture I've got there. Look at the size of the gorilla's abdomen compared with a man's. This is because the gorilla's large abdomen is mostly cecum and colon, which in humans is very small. As a consequence, we absorb very little nutrition from our colons. This is a crime. 
Based on the current recommendations for protein intake, 40% of Americans aren't getting enough protein. Okay? And if you want to talk about a war on women, most females over the age of eight aren't getting enough protein. And the problem is worse because they're equating plant protein with animal protein. So the number's worse than this. We knew a long time ago that animal protein was superior to plant protein, but that's kind of awkward when we start recommending plant-based uh, diets, right? That's kind of awkward. So we just ignore that. Crude protein is the percent nitrogen determined by analysis multiplied by 6.25 because we assume that all the nitrogen present is in protein and we assume that all the protein is 16% nitrogen. Right? That, that's how we get that number. People experiencing glucose spikes are 1.6 times more likely to have Alzheimer's type cognitive impairment. The key culprit is amyloid beta protein, a waste deposit that builds up in the brain and is considered to be behind Alzheimer's. People susceptible to glucose spikes often have diminished cell capacity to absorb glucose. When that happens, the pancreas releases large amounts of insulin to decrease the amount of sugar in the bloodstream. When it's transported to the brain, this insulin becomes troublesome. Normally, a certain type of enzyme breaks down amyloid beta protein. However, when large amounts of insulin flow into the brain, this enzyme breaks down the insulin before the amyloid beta. The intact amyloid beta accumulates in the brain. The nerve cells then die, and this promotes dementia. Moreover, when a glucose spike occurs, cells generate great amounts of reactive oxygen. This reactive oxygen damages DNA within cells in the body, creating a 1.5 times greater risk of cancer. Glucose spikes really are the source of serious illnesses. Okay, sugar um, makes you dumb, makes you an idiot, makes you sick. If you didn't know that, um, th that's just a thing. Um, that I wanted to get into the video Not only about gut types, but also about sugar, you know sugar sugar Now we'll get back to our presentation Where were we? Where were you? And then built a letter to heaven 9-11 our stomach acidity level pH is more acidic than cats and dogs, okay? Corpse eaters, okay? Wolves and wild cats, okay? Or whatever. They find a corpse, they eat it. Okay. I don't know if you can see the 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 thing here but whatever. Let uh, this is a list of uh pH compared uh, pH levels the acidity levels of the stomach acids compared to uh, the animals or compared to other animals so at the bottom of the list we have a langur monkey which is a type of monkey with a pH of 5.9 the the higher the pH the 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 less acidic is your stomach acid okay so we have a, sil a silver silver leafed monkey okay we have a sheep which is 4.9 pH okay the, we have a mouse that eats fucking sewage okay 3.8 cat we have 3.6 a baboon we have 3.7 elephant we have 3.3 and domesticated pig we have 2.6 okay remember that um and that pigs are like i would call i would call him a, a a scavenger more than an omnivore but whatever wild pigs like hogs and shit i don't know whatever 2.6 ph and humans are at 1.5 pH along with the common crow you know the thing that eats garbage corpses he found he finds right uh, like fucking maggot infested corpses okay and he eats them 
okay and it's good okay i know it sounds crazy to you we're gonna talk about this uh, about this in another episode about uh, germs and shit but this is this is the um um this is what they do okay so, so the common crow eats corpses the white backed vulture which is uh, some sort of a bird i guess a prey bird um praying bird um 1.2 ph okay again and they are both scavengers and we are supposed to be omnivores right or uh, better yet <laughs> some of you say we are vegans we are a vegan species right no we're not no we're not um and now we'll, we will watch two videos this is a uh, two videos relating to stomach acids these two videos are in relation to every person that has ever said that meat doesn't digest in your stomach and rots in your guts okay in these two videos the first one will demonstrate raw meat in hydrochloric acid only hcl acid okay uh, it is important to note here that hcl hydrochloric acid is not the only acid we produce for digestion for digestion we also produce sulfuric acid okay we also produce something called sulfuric acid that is even more reactive than hydro hydrochloric acid and breaks down raw bones and raw meat into bone powder and jelly okay okay and now we're gonna watch these things happen in action of course we will also see an, an example of sulfuric acid in action in a second video and now we will watch two videos okay we will watch we will watch two videos where is it yeah so this is the first video this is raw chicken leg in raw chicken oh damn what am i doing raw chicken leg in some hydrochloric acid okay is it good are you with me? <clears throat> okay, so this is the um the leg. Now remember your stomach replaces the hydrochloric acid every few minutes okay every, or all the time it replaces it okay and he just like look here look here man the bone it fucking now he's refilling refilling the hydro hydrochloric acid okay and after after 12 hours we have this this okay we have this now look at this 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 jelly this jelly that is made from raw bones okay hard raw bones that turn into dust and jelly okay this thing this is what's supposed to go into your small intestine okay this is what's supposed to go what is supposed to go to your small intestine okay what is it what is what does the small intestine do absorbs protein and saturated fat look at this learn from this people this this is um this is colon this is small intestine intestine um uh, cream man this is digestive tract cream this is a carnivore this is an apex predators cream dream digestion theme okay so this jelly mm, mm, look at that look at that look at that nutrition at its best okay so this is the first video of uh, raw meat in hydrochloric acid and this is a video of raw meat in sulfuric acid now again we don't have we don't have just sulfuric acid we have a little bit of it it's one of our digestive enzymes or whatever you want to call it okay Please don't try this at home. Experts, yeah, you need an expert. Yeah, I can. It's illegal. You can't use this. You're not capable enough.
Should I actually turn it off? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe somebody's gonna cry because I used his music video. Somebody, somebody's gonna sue me. Ooh, ooh, those nerds looking for trouble. <laughs> Look, look. So, the right glass is hydrochloric acid, the one that we saw in the previous video. And on the right is the um, sulfuric acid. This tobacco, the cigarette, is making me look silly. Okay, so this is five minutes, whatever it is, this is, wait, 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 after 10 minutes, people, 10 minutes, <clears throat> 10 minutes, 10 minutes in sulfuric acid, let's see, let's see, and we are left with, with, nothing. Meat rots in your digestive tract, didn't you know that? The easiest thing to digest is a salad. Yeah, 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 man. Okay. And now I'm gonna show you a bonus video of a vegan that had a surgery in his small intestine. Okay. Because why? Because he had undigested food particles in there. That gave him that 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 caused him pain or something. Hmm. Okay, so this is the video. This is the video. This is the video. This is the video. Vegan soup recipe on TikTok, and first of all, the recipe looks like it requires so much labor and so much work, and the end result looks like a bucket of compost. But when I was looking at it, it reminded me of another video that I had seen on YouTube months ago. I want to show you what it reminded me of. Don't watch it if you're easily disgusted because it's, it's gross. Homemade vegan soup time, motherfuckers. We have our potatoes and our carrots. We are then chopping up our mushrooms. We have our, our tofu and our kale. Mix it all together and makes whatever the fuck this is. Whatever the fuck this is. What do you mean, whatever the fuck this is? This is your food, you fucking idiot. You mix it, you blend it, you electrify it, you filter it, you heat it up, you freeze it. Whatever, right? It's good for digestion, right? It, it breaks down the materials, right? For you to easily digest them, right? Uh, we are not done yet, though. Other delicious, cruelty-free ingredients. Cruelty-free ingredients. To add. Cruelty-free? Uh, oh, wait, you had a surgery. Is that cruelty-free, fucking bitch? Um, this patient had a lot of uh, vegetables um, at one time which uh, patient could not digest and it caused a blockage in the small intestine and small she intestine. needed the surgery to remove all this stuff. But two hours to do the surgery and just clean out all the Two hours, man. Two hours to open your fucking gut in your small intestine, okay? And pull out... Small bubble and repair it. Is the amount of small bubble... And pull out this shit, man. This shit. Undigested fucking... Uh, what, what did you ha have there? Like sweet potatoes and mushrooms and shit. Blend it up, chop it up, cruelty free, blah blah blah. Shut the fuck up. Okay. If you ever find this video on YouTube, there's like, a, there's like in the in the comment section, there's like retards or oh, uh, he didn't chew it. He didn't chew it enough. Yeah, sure. We saw today what the cow does and how much does it uh, does she digest from what she does and all the system she has, right? You didn't chew it enough. Present, uh, which I just took out. Fucking it is. Okay, that's that's it with this one. You get you get the point. I I think you're smart people, right? If you if you manage to survive until this point, I think you're smart people. Yeah, then I'm going to I'm going to clap. I'm going to clap some cheeks <laughs> with your boys. Okay. So, let's go back to the presentation, okay? The relationship between body length and the length of the digestion system. Um, uh, the lowest one is a cat, is four on one, which, which basically means if you just spread the, uh, the digestion track of that animal and you compare it 
to the length of the body of that animal okay you will get a cat which is four to one okay human is five to one dog is six to one okay carnivore 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 apex predator please hyper carnivore please baboon is eight to one a horse is 12 to one and cattle is 20 to one okay can you only look at this and determine something no but we looked at the entire digestion tract from the teeth from the mouth to the anus okay and I have a news flash for you, man. Get this, my man. News flash. You're an apex predator, okay? You're not a herbivore or a whore or um, you know, uh, a, uh, what, uh, 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 an, an omnivore, okay? You're an apex predator. You're not supposed to digest anything else, okay? Okay. And now we will watch a video. What video? I don't know what video, but we will watch it. Um, oh, yeah. It's a video about fiber. Okay. <laughs> Here is... For all of you who still want to listen to the fiberlicious... A comparison of the relative size of those four... Okay, now look here. Now here the comparison is better actually for our small intestine. Okay, would you look at that? Now look, look, look just the small bowel. Okay, look at this. Look at this tall little graph. That's our small bowel. Okay, a place for what? For absorbing protein and saturated fat. Bigger than any fucking monkey out there. Okay, cecum does not exist. Colon. The smallest one, Colin, yeah, the smallest one of all. Colin, the place where the bacteria meets the cellulose and keeps on digesting. We don't have that. We don't have that. Okay. Parts of the digestive system. So compared to some other primates, primates, if you look especially at the last three bars, we're the very last one, and gorilla and chimpanzee next to them. We have um, approximately the same percentage of stomach but then most of what we have is the small intestines but and we have no cecum to speak of really and drastically reduce colon size. Even the ADA, which is very much in favor of putting fiber in your diet, cautions against eating more than about 20 or 35 grams. And the reasons they cite is because we can't process it and they acknowledge that uh, you will have gastrointestinal just okay you can't digest fiber whatever you can't digest isn't good for your digestive system right makes sense good if you want a better a better presentation about fiber you should search on youtube paul dr paul mason p-a-u-l-m-a-s-o-n okay paul mason fiber he has a 22 minute um, um presentation about fiber uh, with uh, with the studies that uh, he did with his patients and other studies that other people did with their patients okay fiber is bad for ya stress, cramping, diarrhea, constipation, gas, sometimes worse as in permanent kinds of damage. This is a study that is uh, published, I put it up here, the, uh, the reference to it. And what he found is that humans out here have a very acidic pH. Acidic. So in this study he found a pH of a little over 2. There are other studies that have found that humans have a stomach pH of about 1.5 whereas other primates have a pH of about 6. When you talk about iron, the best source of iron is meat. Why is that? Because meat contains myoglobin. Myoglobin has iron inside it in the form of heme and this is showing you that the heme iron has a specific receptor in the intestines which is another indication that our biology as biological evolution, we were designed to use animal-based food. Okay, so very important uh, important point here that it makes, okay? Our body doesn't get iron, okay? We don't have iron. They're trying to convince you that the iron that you have in a rock and the iron that you have in a plant, okay, uh, broccoli or whatever, and the iron that you get from animal products, it's the same iron. It's not the same iron, okay? It's not the same iron. Our body uses specific iron, which is called heme hemoglobin okay um heme iron 
and we have a specific receptor for it, okay? We have a specific place in our food chain, in our natural food chain. Okay, these are all. Uh, this is this is for all those people, especially for the people that are support drinking um, distilled water. Okay, this is what they're saying. This is their theory also. Okay, this is not the same iron. The iron you find in a rock or in a plant, it's not ready for you yet. It needs to get eaten by an animal that eats those things, and and digest these things into heme iron and not they exactly they specifically digest it okay the bacteria they have digested the fungi they have there the yeast they have they digest these things okay on the frontal level like you, you get what i'm saying so let's continue plants have alkaloids the alkaloids are bitter they cause nerve uh, transmission damage, they cause DNA damage, and they can alter the way we can absorb carbs and fats. There are certain plants that have cyogenic glycosides that block the way the cells breathe. And then the terpenoids are especially uh, something that we should pay attention to because they're in citrus fruit. They're volatile oils like turpentine, and these things they prevent the absorption of proteins, they pre prevent absorption of B12, calcium, and also the phenolics. So, um, phenolics are found in flavonoids, tannins, and basically these bind to proteins and prevent absorption and digestion. So, for any of you going out and saying, hey, I'm going to use plants for health, you got to keep all of these things at the back of your mind. Okay. <laughs> <sighs> okay, another point I want to make on the uh, iron thing and whatever. All of the science world, that um, the, all the agenda world out there, they're trying to convince you that the same iron in the broccoli is the same iron, iron you have in your blood. It's not, okay? Just because you filtered it out through a special filter or through a special whatever process and the, the same particle got to the same filter or got to the same whatever, okay? Showing same, uh, I don't know, whatever. It's not the same substance, okay? They can't determined that this is this they can't they they can't okay if you haven't noticed it yet if you haven't learned about all of your scientism religion yet okay they can't measure things directly a co2 meter a co2 meter measures ph it doesn't measure co2 okay an oxygen meter doesn't measure oxygen Okay, a TDS meter doesn't measure how much particles per million you have in your water or whatever. It measures how many electricity goes through a uh, to to iron, you know, for, through a cathode and anode. So welcome to your science world, man. Scientism, um, yeah. So here we are. Missing nutrients from plants. First of all, we have vitamin D, okay? You don't have vitamin D in plants, okay? You don't have it in mushrooms. Vitamin D2, that vitamin D3 does the same thing. It doesn't do the same thing. They don't have a way to prove that this is this, okay? If you pass it on, pass it through a filter, and it's the and it has some sort of settlement in the in a, you know in the last filter, it does it doesn't mean that it's the same fucking substance. You can't prove it. They can't see molecules. They can't see atoms. They're trying to convince you that they can. They can't. These are all theories. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm gonna leave you a link down below where you can learn about the true science. Of this world okay true critical thinking science okay where you can develop your your real scientific um way of thinking okay gonna leave it down 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 at the description it's gonna be called something like get out of the get out of the science cult or 
religion, whatever, vitamin D. How do you produce vitamin D? You get cholesterol to your skin and then it hits the and then the sun hits it, okay? And then you turn it into vitamin D. DHA, which is a fatty acid that your um, brain uses cholesterol, okay? Very important, cholesterol, cholesterol, you are made from cholesterol, okay? We're gonna talk about it later. Heme iron, the, the Indian guy told us about that. Vit vitamin, vitamin, vitamin A, okay? You don't get vitamin Vitamin A from plants, from carrots. In carrots, they have better carotene, and only a germ can turn it into an vitamin into vitamin A. You don't have that germ. Vitamin B6, that's uh, or vitamin B12, that's all for all the vegans and whatever that need to inject it into their butt cheeks eventually. Vitamin K2 in its MK4 form and not MK7. MK7 it's from is is a form from plants and bacteria. The bacteria digest, digesting plants and makes MK7. K2 in the form of MK7. It means the chain length, whatever. You can search about it for uh, yourself. And MK uh, in its MK. K4 form, which it comes from animals only, exclusively, okay? Creatine, very important, carnosine, very important, turin, very important, and carnitine. I wanted to talk you, to you, you men out there about that, okay? Carnitine, carnitine. This thing explains a lot of, um, uh, a lot of why, why there are, uh, why there are, um, uh, men who are jacked, you know, and they have low testosterone, testosterone while um, <clears throat> while other men who are fat or obese or super skinny have um, higher testosterone levels levels in their blood. Okay, carnitine. Carnitine does the same uh, things that testosterone does in the body, but even better. Carnitine only in meat folks only in meat cla you can learn uh, learn about it for yourself coq10 another fucking uh, good thing about to your heart uh, uh, a lot of uh, health clinics um pu publish this substance coq10 go get coq10 it's good for your heart hey where can i get coq10 naturally in meat uh, is meat healthy for you no Saturated fat, very important. Um, I can give you the benefit of, of the doubt. You can get saturated fat from um, uh, coconut oil and whatever. But remember, there are things there that cause allergies to some people. That means it it does something chemically to your body that it doesn't like. And if you don't get an allergy from it, that it doesn't mean you don't get the same damage. Okay. Um, so saturated fat, we have it in coconut oil, coconut butter, and uh, palm oil, I think, also. But remember, it's it's plant saturated fat. It has no um, ready heme iron for for you. It has no ready vitamins for you. Fat soluble uh, vitamins, you know. So <clears throat> take that in mind into consideration. At this point, we need to point out some things. Must point out some things. Okay. People think that lab testing shows that certain vitamins or minerals are present in certain foods when they were extracted by when they were extracted by chemical means, radiation, or electricity from those foods. Okay. The same thing I talked about with the broccoli and whatever. Um, they extracted something with heat, with with uh, with cold, with radiation, with electricity, with chemical with other chemicals these uh, steps these processes this is not what happens here okay so if some scientist did some trick to fucking you know they're doing tricks they're doing tricks that's what i'm trying to say here okay this is not what happens here not at all uh, another point i want to get uh, get uh, p past here Calorie. Every, everyone that you know that uses the term calorie, okay, while trying to explain to you something about nutrition, know that he's an idiot, okay? He never learned about nutrition as he should have, okay? Calorie comes comes from um, physics. It comes from the physics, not come, not. It does not come from nutrition. It comes from the phys, uh, from the study of physics. And what is a calorie? A calorie is um, how much time something burns in a special oven that they have in their fucking lab. Special of so how much time something burns in a special oven they have in the lab. It's called a bone colometer or something. Okay. And this is nutrition fucking tips 
via how how much time something burns and this is it, it, they're idiots they're idiots okay whoever talks to you about calories yeah you should count your calorie you should look at the calorie bullshit it's shit okay don't listen to that person please people think that supplements which are extracted uh, which are extracted nutrients are the exact same vitamins and minerals or nutrients that come naturally from whole foods because that's what the big companies can put on the label following a lab experiment experiment or extraction okay that's exactly what i'm talking about here um they, they use some chemicals some um, radiation some like electricity and they 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 filter out some nutrition from they they filtered out some powder from the milk they dried the milk they pass it through a small hole in high pressure whatever they call it milk powder or protein powder or whatever and they want to say to you this is exactly the same effect as if you would eat meat no it's not if it's if you were, were to eat it whole where it came from okay as it came from as mother nature and papa universe created it for us holistically to eat in a certain way okay under certain circumstances okay cause and effect okay you can't break you can't skip these steps okay sorry we saw what uh, skipping these steps does to cats People think that plant protein is com is a complete protein and is exactly the same one you get from animal foods. The Indian guy talked about it uh, a little bit. Plant proteins are not e equivalent to uh, animal proteins. Not at all. People think that we have proven the 3D structure of molecules. We have not. We have not. Okay? And let me say to you something else. Okay? Uh, when the science world tries to show you tries to show you their logic their theory through paintings through 3d animations you should get a red flag and walk around with it you should fucking open your eyes okay you should be very suspicious okay when somebody tries to complete their logic with a uh, with, with a 3d animation okay it's either you know or you don't know okay and there's no shame in saying i don't know Okay, because we are retarded compared to this this place. We are re fucking tarded compared to creation, to the creator, to whatever you want to call it. Okay, we are re fucking tarded. Okay, no exclusions, no exclusions. Okay, we can't prove that this is this. That's the what I'm trying to explain to you guys here. Okay, so we haven't proven the 3D structure of molecules. Okay, we can only paint them. People think that digestion is one side and doesn't need enzymes or bacteria from the uh, to digest pasteurization. Uh, pasteurization, okay? This is um, this is exactly uh, what I said about raw meat. Okay, it has enzymes. It has things that that wait for this cell to go into the right conditions ph okay stomach acid into the right conditions then the cell bursts the enzymes they, they understand okay the germs they understand oh shit we need to digest we need to turn this into that okay and now one germ is eating something turns it into something else his poop okay and another germ eats that poop turns it into something else okay and then you and then you um <laughs> damn and then you um uh, get that poop okay you use that poop okay as nutrition they need to turn certain things into other things in raw milk for example it, there's an enzyme that digests the um the lactose okay the sugar that's all for that's for all the people that oh i can't drink milk you can drink milk you can drink raw milk not pasteurized milk okay that's your problem you don't have the enzyme to digest raw milk has the enzyme to digest it and we actually have stories of people who drank raw milk for a couple of months and then they drank pasteurized milk and nothing happened why because their body remembers that enzyme remembers that process okay so uh, digestion is not one-sided okay stop thinking that way okay uh, there's another bacteria in milk that tells the calcium to do something there's a lot of things that you are killing off okay murdering with the heat the amount of daily intake of nutrients is always compared to regular people who eat shit okay what i mean here you go to um <clears throat> you go to um 
to a listing on a site how much vitamin d or whatever how much mi micronutrients i need whatever these these uh, tablet uh, these uh, these graphs or these studies or whatever they are compared to regular people who eat shit okay and when you eat shit you need more nutrition to stay healthy you dig if you eat sugar you need magnesium to digest it okay if you eat other shit you need other shit to the you need other nutrition to digest that shit you waste your health to digest shit okay to protect yourself you waste nutrition so the amount of daily intake of nutrients is compared to people who eat shit plants can't run but uh, plants can't run but they have chemical means of defense look at this here okay this is what it, what this is this is oxalic acid okay oxalic acid is something that is present in almost every plant that you fucking eat seeds and all especially your greens like kale and and and, and 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 broccolis and whatever okay it has oxalic oxalic acid this is structures crystallized structure of oxalic acid mixed with different minerals okay it actually takes minerals and turns itself into a crystal that your body can't digest this crystal your body it gets stuck these things are smaller than cells they can burst cells these things get stuck in your fatty tissue like your fucking joints like your eyes like your spine okay like your brain okay so these things get stuck and your body can't get rid of it easily okay not at all this is oxalic acid you see these spikes this is oxalic acid mixed with calcium okay this is for all the people who eat kale here or broccoli or whatever this is calcium with oxalic acid this is what have and you and you and you and you're like oh yeah my kale leaf has a lot of calcium oh yeah and what does it turn into poison poisonous needles that your body can't fucking get rid of this is called oxalates oxalic acid calcium oxalate i'm gonna leave a link i leave a link for you to indulge into this this subject okay and yeah but our body produces oxalic acids on its own yeah it does in what condition does the body produce ox oxalates lack of vitamin b6 i wonder when the body has too much vitamin c the famous vitamin we're gonna talk about him later and when certain molds are present in the body okay very interesting when does our body produce poison when when we are sick very interesting now we will watch a video we will watch a vadao about plant toxins we're gonna watch this italian guy who is gonna explain to know, to us how plants do not want to be eaten okay plants don't want to be eaten so if you talk to a biologist about this fact he will understand it easily that plants don't want to be eaten and so they produce what they call secondary metabolites and i will call them bioactive compounds and a, an example could be the estrogen receptor that is uh, bound by endogenous uh, um, hormones uh, estrogens but is also bound by exogenous uh, substances like for example phytoestrogens so this is a good example how uh, the plant and the animal kingdom interact between them this is a mechanism uh, the defense mechanisms Mechanism. of plants in this table you can see selected categories of some bioactive compounds of course this is a it's not an official uh, table it's just a little review that i've done and uh, table damn i wanted to say table but i was like nah man table is like a hebrew word there are a lot of other substances that are not included here but for example we have antinutrients such as uh, phytic acid and oxalic acid that they decrease the bioavailability of some nutrients we have endocrine disruptors like for example lectins phytoestrogens or exorphins they are exogenous opioid peptides derived from the digestion of uh, certain proteins that they interact with endocrine receptors we also can include immune immune disruptors like uh, lectins gliadin stomachin like proteins 
or saponins that they overstimulate the immune system or they can disrupt physical barriers. I going include as well uh, some new substances like uh, DNA and RNA binding molecules such as rice microRNA that has been shown to alter the transcription of the LDL receptor. Uh, I will also include antioxidants, at least the isolated intake of certain antioxidants, like for example, vitamin C, that has been shown to decrease the beneficial effect of uh, exercise in, in uh, type 2 diabetes patients. So perhaps the intake or the high intake of isolated antioxidants could be uh, viewed as a bioactive compound disrupting our physiology. And some flavonoids, for example, the high intake of quercetin and chymferol has been shown to inhibit several key enzymes in metabolism. Creatures defend themselves in very different ways. So animals obviously can flee, but plants are helpless. This is a very vicious predator here eating these innocent plants. And plants, though, however, are not so innocent. They defend themselves in a variety of ways. I'll just mention two or three before I get to the chemical ones just very briefly. Um, Physical defense we all know about. It's, it's not um, very complex. Animal guard defense is quite interesting. There are a lot of plants that actually hire ants using various types of rewards, different kinds of food, shelter, and these um, ants, in fact, um, defend the plants vigorously from their predators, actually attack things that would try to eat the plants. Toxins, as I say, are defenses that damage the eater. And I think of these as things that either disrupt the metabolism or the structure. And I'll give examples of both of these. And there are many different kinds of toxins. Some of these affect the nervous system. Some stop respiration. Some inhibit digestive enzymes. Some damage the gut lining. So there's a host of different ways. And there are think all of these can have effects on us. We are remarkably similar to insects and all other animals. Let's look at one particular protease inhibitor, the one in soybeans, and we know that has an effect on the digestion of many insects. This has been studied in many, many insects, things like beetles, tobacco hornworm, corn earworm, many, many. And we see similar... Many, many digestive enzyme inhibitors in, in many seeds. And by the way, the, the soybean protease inhibitors also affect lab animals. And how about humans? Um, and at what dosage? Dosage is a very big thing. We can often stand small dosages of many things, but if we up the dosage, so if somebody's eating huge amounts of soy that is not properly processed, then it wouldn't be surprising that the protease inhibitors might be having some effect. Wheat protease inhibitors are, I think, maybe more of an issue for many people um, because they've now been shown to be, a, be strong triggers for an innate immune response in cells, both from celiac and non-celiac patients. So this is not something that's, this is totally different from gluten. But this is for all, all the people that are like, oh, gluten, gluten, are you afraid of fucking gluten? Like South Park uh, had an episode that when they had fun, uh, had, had fun um, uh, over gluten. Uh, gluten is not the only problem, folks. This is not the only problem. Stop fucking laughing, okay? Okay? Learn. Learn, please. This is not related to celiac because it apparently can affect cells from a wide variety of patients. And it looks like it's fueling inflammation. There's a, a paper published about a year and a half ago, wheat amylase trypsin inhibitors drive intestinal inflammation via activation of toll-like receptor 4. So we're now at the mechanistic level understanding how this is happening. Could this be involved in what we call non-celiac gluten sensitivity? Might it be not actually gluten in a case like this, but some other component of wheat? because wheat has multiple defensive compounds. I think all of us have heard about cyanide. It blocks respiration. It's a quick way to, um, to die if you're exposed to large amounts of cyanide. Entomologists use it to kill insects because it'll kill the insects quite quickly. And their cyanogenic glycosides are in a number of plants, things like cherries and peaches in the, in the pits. And there's good evidence that this is a defense against herbivores.
It's in a lot of plants. We know it in over 2,500 plant species. And this stuff is released upon tissue damage. So it's in an inactive form, and when tissue is damaged by something eating it, then that causes the cyanide to be released. Exactly as with oxalic acid, okay, in the broccoli or whatever you're eating, okay? The oxalic acid and the calcium are not related, but once you get in there and you rip it, or you mix it, or you blend it, that's when you get the poison, okay? Plants defend themselves with chemicals. Please, people, please stop fucking eating shit. Stop giving birth to idiots, bruh. To fucking uh, fog, fog-minded fog uh, creatures, bruh. They're suffering. You are creating suffering in this world via your stupidity, your fucking stupid actions and beliefs. Your stupid fucking, hey Google, can you tell me the truth? And believing that shit, okay? Your inexperience, okay? These are things that via the these things you create suffering in this world okay these children are suffering how do plants protect themselves here are our friends the crucifers which we're told are extremely healthy for us and there are lots of them in the vegetable aisle but if the broccoli is cut or chewed then these two compounds mix together and form this uh, sulforaphane, which is an... Uh, here's another problem with two compounds that mix in broccoli that make poison. Isothiocyanate. There are lots of them in the crucifer family, but we're going to look only at sulforaphane. And what is its job? The broccoli now needs to defend itself from the little creatures that are trying to eat it. It basically is a, a molecule that's designed to kill small living creatures. So what might this mean for us? Um, how does it do it? So the way that these chemicals kill or try to kill these small creatures that are trying to eat it is it, uh, the, the primary way is it poisons their mitochondria. The mitochondria are very important. They're the energy powerhouse of all of our cells. Um, and it also causes all kinds of other uh, problems as well. As you look below, you can see. And, and, in, uh, and in scientific studies, it's been shown that it can kill healthy cells as well as cancerous cells, and it can actually cause cancer itself. We're going to look at the potato glycoalkyl in particular because the, not only because they're the best studied but they're the most potent uh, glycoalkaloids and other in the other um, nightshades are, are either weak or very low concentrations so these are designed as pesticides they're cholinesterase inhibitors which is a it's a neurotoxin uh, nerve gas works exactly the same way um, and uh, they burst membranes open because they bind so strongly to cholesterol that it destabilizes the membrane of living cells photosensitizers are toxins that make animals sensitive to light. And these are important in plant defense. Okay, so it makes them sensitive to light. One example of this is celery. Another example is wild parsnip. These are both in the carrot family. I'm going to mention two families, the carrot and the citrus family, that are well known for photosensitizers. So the carrot family, the citrus family, there are a number of others. And these photosensitizers sensitizers are technically called furanocoumarins. These are phenolic, that just means polyphenolic, multiple ring compounds that become light activated. So when light hits them, it changes them chemically and they become activated and they can then cross link with DNA and they can also modify proteins. So they actually damage DNA and proteins in the presence of light. So this is a poor sheep. So another compound, chemical compound from uh, Mr. Plant here, okay? It goes into your blood and then it activates when, when, when you are exposed to light, okay? That has had a photos, um, photosensitive reaction. It's a photodermatitis and its ears and face are not good. There can be blistering, lesions, swelling of the head. <clears throat> celery is also kind of fun. It's a known occupational risk for celery handlers and celery pickers. People who are exposed to lots of celery, they get what's called celery dermatitis. If they go out in the sun after being exposed to lots of celery, lime juice is a well-known cause of photodermatitis. So if you squeeze limes 
and then go out in the sun, you're at pretty serious risk. And this can actually be a horrifying um, manifestation. Don't try this at home, kids. Your hands will swell up. They'll be, they'll be blistered. It's just, and people who don't understand what's happening, um, they go to the physician. Often um, dermatologists know about this, but often other physicians don't recognize it. They don't know what's happened, but the people's hand, I've seen this, it's just horrifying. Here, for example, it's made the news last year, <coughs> national news, Lyme's blaze blame for girls' second-degree burns. She um, had, I don't know if it's large enough for you to see, but she's got pretty serious burns from Lyme exposure. So, again, these plants did not evolve this to do to us, but they evolved it to do to their... Um, things that would hurt them. These are called phytoecdysones. Here is a poor pupa, an insect pupa, with three heads. So this creature, unfortunate creature, ate some of a particular plant, it's called a bugleweed, that has these phytoecdysones. And as a result, its whole developmental pattern was thrown out of kilter. Now if we Think about this, this is a gross physical manifestation, but it wouldn't have to be this gross physical manifestation to have profound influences, would it? But this is just, I use this because it was such a dramatic example. This is uh, exactly for all the Indians and Africans and whatever, whatever culture you are from or area, okay, that have kids that are born with three legs or four arms or whatever, okay? Keep vaccinating them and keep um, eating vegetables. And seeds, don't forget the How seeds. How about hormone mimics in our own food? Well, let's look at the phytoestrogens, the compounds that mimic female hormones um, in soy, as, a, as an example in our food. So, soybeans make these compounds called isoflavones. And these are plant defense phytoestrogens. And they're excellent fungicides. So this is a soybean leaf with some rust. It's a, it's a type of fungus. And so they probably evolved to protect the plant against fungi and possibly insects. Um, and we know that plants under attack make more. So this is what you'd expect of a defense chemical, isn't it? The plant's being attacked, it makes sense for the plant to upregulate its production. And we can see that this is, the, this is one of the phytoestrogens from soy, and this is um, human estrogen, and you can see there are similarities in the molecule, and it's not surprising that there may be some, our body may confuse this at the receptor level. So these are phytoestrogens. We can go to a health food store and we can find books like this. This is by an MD. This soy is recommended for menopausal women. Um, here's a supplement that talks about it. Okay, so this is one of these things that it really makes me think we compart humans can compartmentalize our minds so remarkably. We can say, okay, postmenopausal women take soy, and then we give, we give children this as their sole nutrition, in some cases, soy formula, in which to me, I just think about it, I think, wow, and when are we... This is for all of our stupid fucking Google-based mothers over there, okay? You're supposed to be a healthy mother, you're supposed to eat your correct diet, okay? Which is supposed to give you nutrition, okay? To your boobies, okay? And then when you get pregnant, the boobies, they get bigger, okay? Why do they get bigger? Because you need to give your baby yourself your fat, okay? And in that fat, you better have fat soluble vitamins okay and minerals okay you should be a healthy woman and then you can give a healthy you can give birth to a healthy human into this world okay and then you can breastfeed them as mother nature needs and has you to do okay very important, or of, or, of, or all of our stupid fucking Google mothers. Please listen to this. Please stop giving your babies powders from labor laboratories, okay? It's not gonna work. The health is already created here. Somebody created our health already. 
there's no fucking geek in no fucking lab that can invent something invent health all of a sudden okay create health there is nothing new under the sun there is no geek that can tell you how your baby is go uh, is going to be healthy okay better than you can better than whatever is already created here by mother nature and you should listen to your mother nature you fucking stupid bitch fucking witch giving birth to fucking shit most sense ruining our fucking world yeah basically basically ruining our fucking world not basically literally okay ruining our fucking world okay living uh, uh, leaving shit for kids into this world okay and then also living a shit world to these kids double fucking sin you fucking witch live to hormonal influences um, when we're very young now, some people would say, well, Asians eat a lot of soy. Well, it's not really that simple. They usually don't eat soy foods in large quantities unless forced to do so by famine or poverty. It's mainly as condiments and flavoring, not meat replacements. And they, then, they also eat it in traditional fermented forms, which can reduce some of the toxins. So, um, and we know that these kinds of plant phytoestrogens can have profound effects on mammals. We've known since the 40s that they can cause serious reproductive problems in sheep. This is very well known. And we know it can cause problems from many other animals. So what's it doing in humans? How sensitive what? are humans to this? There are certainly a number of studies that raise red flags. For example, a study from 2008, <coughs> soy causes a reduction in sperm quality in men. A study from a number of years before that, it changes the, causes changes in the sex hormone ratios in people. And a study that came out in 2010 um, raises real concerns about children. Some research shows that urine levels of these isoflavones are 500 times higher in infants fed soy formula. So we know that a lot of it is being metabolized. So we know that your body doesn't fucking use it and he just throws it out. And going through the body. Another defense with oxalates. So people switch from say McDonald's burgers to spinach salads to get healthy and they develop kidney stones and other agony. That's a, a great thing. I'm She's a weird one, I don't know. I'm really glad you mentioned that. I had a student a number of years ago who for some reason ate spinach every day. And she was, you know, a 19 or 20 year old college student. She had had repeated efforts of kidney stones. And I said, you know, you really want to think about how much spinach you're eating. You know, I, I'm, I'm not a physician, but if I was you, I would think about the quantities of spinach. She probably couldn't detoxify oxalate. I want, uh, I want one of whatever he's having with those eyes. Okay, so we saw this. This was a long, long video, boys and girls. Okay, I need to head to work in an hour. So we're gonna finish this. We're gonna finish this. Come on, 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 come on. Okay. I'm getting tired of you. The famous vitamin C. Our genes chose not to synthesize vitamin C, and there's a good reason behind it, okay? Opposed to what is written in a lot of places, meat and organs do have vitamin C. They do contain vitamin C, okay? Especially raw meat and raw organs, okay? Why? Because when you cook the meat, okay, the more you process the food thermally, okay, the more vitamin C you destroy, okay? And other nutrients go to waste. Vitamin C, what is vitamin C? Vitamin C is a is a water water uh, soluble vitamin what do you do to water when you heat something what do you do to whatever when you heat it up what do you do to the water what happens to the water it disappears it's exactly uh, this is especially for people who believe here in the structure of water and that it's supposed to come holistically structured from somewhere in a certain way and then you're supposed to eat it in a certain you know so this is for you Stop ruining the fucking meat with, with heat. Heat with meat. Don't do 
did. Cholesterol, uric acid, and carnitine are the best antioxidants a predator can have, okay? They say that you need vitamin C because it's an antioxidant. No. Cholesterol, uric acid, and, uh, and carnitine are better at that. And also, they are three against one, okay? And they do exactly the same things, even better than vitamin C in our body, as they say to us that it does, opposed to what is written in a lot of places. Gout, which is a disease of inflamed joints, does not happen of high... <laughs> does not happen because of high uric acid blood levels, but because on top of that, they have low glutathione, okay, which is raised via eating meat, okay? So if you have high uric acid, but low glutathione, you will have a problem. But if you just eat fucking meat, man, you will have high glutathione and you won't have any fucking problem. Again, going to that point of everything comes holistically, you can't isolate anything okay and say this is this oh this is the cause of that no we talked about testosterone we talked about iron heme iron whatever and now we have an example of gout, of gout disease which is caused by high uric acid but is it only the uric acid no it's always it's always it's also low glutathione okay which is raised via eating meat. And now we will watch a video. This is a video about vitamin C. This is <clears throat> this is a video, um, no an interview. Uh, I'm going to leave it in the description also. An interview with uh, Dr. Paul Saladino. This is the guy we're seeing on screen right now, I think. Yeah. And this is Paul Saladino, Dr. Paul Saladino. You can find him on YouTube. We're going to go through, uh, go about him in the end of the video, out of the presentation. And he's talking to Bart K, one of the most important people you can find on the internet uh, that is teaching about the carnivore diet and nutrition. Okay. He's a physiologist. He's, uh, he did studies. He was teaching high classes of elite, whatever. And he, um, 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 um he realized what he was doing in this scientism religion, okay? And then he hung up his lab coat, fired himself basically, and opened a YouTube channel and a Patreon, whatever, so he can tell you the truth. Huh? What a fucking golden guy, huh? What a fucking golden guy. I think uh, Bart K is one of the last few real men that we have. In, on this earth, literally, I'm not fucking kidding, Bart K, thank you for existing, really, thank you for everything you fucking do, I fucking love you, you're my, you're my um, favorite nerd. Interesting, because 99% of the people on the internet would tell you, take all the vitamin C you can, it's the best thing ever, I mean, this was Linus yeah. Pauling's thing, man, right? Yeah, and, and that would be a mistake, that would be wrong in my humble opinion and clearly in yours as well, Paul. I, I agree with absolutely everything you've said. And to kind of reinforce it from another angle, let's bring in a Mendelian inference. Uh, for those that don't know, a Mendelian inference is about the genes, what's going on with the genes, etc. Now, some 60 million years ago or so, uh, allegedly, allegedly, Bart, you can't know that. Uh, the human species entirely lost the ability to synthesize vitamin C in our bodies. Okay. Now, obviously that started with a, with a random mutation that was selected for. So we need to take that uh, concept a step further and go, well, okay, it's not just that some people developed or some people developed this uh change whereby that those particular people can't make vitamin C and, and others that made vitamin C continue to live long and happy lives doing that as well. The fact is no human being, none, has the ability to synthesize their own vitamin C. That means that gene was not just drifting away, it was knocked out. It was selected against. There was a good reason why we needed to get rid of that gene to get rid of making the substance the reason in my mind is quite simple firstly we can get perfectly sufficient vitamin c from eating animals which is what we were doing mostly at the time that this um, ability to generate our own uh, vitamin c was 
selected against when it was knocked out of the human lineage. So we could get all the vitamin C we need there. And secondly, there was a parallel development whereby we lost another enzyme which is involved in the breakdown of uric acid. Now, what that meant was that human beings have a much higher level of urate or uric acid, if you like, in their bodies than basically just about any other mammal, certainly any of the mammals that can generate their own vitamin C. And that leads us to a discussion of, well, why is that so? Why did we have a gene which meant that we maintained uric acid? Uric acid is, is universally thought of as a negative thing, as a problem. Uh, too much uric acid causes gout, is what we're told. Okay. Well, what's interesting, and what ties back into what you were saying just a few minutes ago, Paul, actually it looks like gout only occurs in people who have both high uric acid and low glutathione as so well. So interesting. That's so interesting. It's, it's fascinating, isn't it? I and mean, I just saw this this morning and we discussed this before we started this chat and I sort of, I flipped you the stuff, Paul, and you said, oh, give me 15 minutes extra time <laughs> to read. And, you know, and rightly so, because it's fascinating. Um, you know, and, and, and there, is, uh, there is clear inference from another study that, that we'll talk about soon where there is a clear linkage between glutathione uh, reduction oxidation and an intermediate step involving uric acid as the scavenger for radical oxygen species, free radicals, ROS, oxidizers, those things that cause oxidative damage. Um, and so it looks very much like the human species has developed an ability to retain more uric acid and that that uric acid is playing the antioxidant role that is proposed to be the domain of vitamin C. I think this is such a cool concept. What a wild concept. I love it. I love it. What a wild concept. Oh, you don't need vitamin C? What a wild concept. Oh, you eat raw meat? What a wild concept. I'm just following Mother Nature. Okay, so vitamin C, we talked about that. And now we are getting through the presentation. I didn't want to scare you, but cholesterol okay holy shit i know i know men who are like 30 years old that are afraid of a molecule your body and your brain are made out of cholesterol okay there are no such things like bad cholesterol ldr or good cholesterol lhdl everything has a purpose in your body okay there is no bad cholesterol there's no good cholesterol okay your body makes perfect cholesterol for a reason there is a, there is damaged cholesterol oxidized we'll just call it, call it damaged here on this show okay from the uh, processes uh, pro from the processed foods people eat protein powders and milk milk powders uh, we talked about that earlier smoking high blood pressure and high glucose and unsaturated fat plant oils okay damage cholesterol okay they damage the cholesterol now you have damaged cholesterol okay smoking high blood pressure uh, high glucose and unsaturated fat damages the glycocalyx layer glycocalyx layer we will talk about it in a second scientists say that cholesterol gets stuck in the arteries because of the lab experience experiment they did on bunnies okay they took bunnies which are supposed to eat which are herbivores, whore, what? And they fed them raw meat, uh, they fed them meat and fat and whatever, and they uh, they saw in their arteries there was a buildup of cholesterol. So, uh, of course, um, this relates to humans also, to you know hyper carnivores, um, apex predators. Say uh, scientists say that LDL cholesterol is the bad guy because they find it in dead patients. They took uh, they took uh, people that uh, uh, that died from um, from heart disease. They looked at their arteries. They 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 they, uh, they looked at the damaged area. There, uh, there's calcification. There's cholesterol there. Okay, there's LDL cholesterol there. Hmm, must be the cholesterol th that's causing the damage, right? Somebody leaves garbage at your doorstep every fucking day and you open the door and you see flies all over that fucking garbage and you say hey fucking flies stop putting that garbage near my fucking door right dumbasses 
this is an artery and this is an artery we are looking through the artery okay through the artery okay through the artery and this is the glycocalyx layer okay these are the black black hairs over here okay around the artery okay it's a layer of hairs glycocalyx what does it mean glyco means it made it is made out of simple sugar glucose okay and what does it mean it means it's sensitive to glucose smoking hot blood uh, high blood pressure and high glucose okay damages cholesterol now we'll watch a video this is a video from a guy named Ivor Cummins, okay, and he is an engineer from an elite heart disease something uh, study whatever clinic in Ireland, okay, he has a channel on YouTube, we will talk about him later, and he's gonna explain everything there is to the mechanism, every step there is to the mechanism of heart disease, how does heart disease start, what is the cause and effect steps in the process. That's quite simple, it's very simple. You got more LDLs, more go in, boom. Boom. This is what is he's trying to explain here. This is the uh, the known accepted scientific belief. Okay, LDL particles in the blood, and then then and then they just boom, and they get into the artery. LDL bad. You get heart disease. Very simple. Don't need to be a scientist. However, there are layers here of evolutionary technology that will manage whether or not or to what extent the LDLs will get in the wall. So they'd be really important, but the LDL guys usually don't talk about these. They just talk about the LDLs go in, boom, right? That's a problem. Four layers actually that I've dug up, and we'll talk through each one. Now just to orient you, here's your artery, a wall on each side, and here's the blood flow, the lumen in the middle, some red blood cells there, and here's all your happy little LDL particles. Right? Blood flows along, wall on each side. And we're going to be focusing in here, just where the blood meets the artery wall. And here's where our four layers are that decide whether your LDL particle count would be a problem. So blown up a little, here's level one, the glycocalyx. And this is only discovered 30 years ago. It's uh, kind of a forest of hair-like uh, protrusions that come out of the inside of your artery wall, the inside surface. They're amino acids and glucose, kind of proteoglycans. And as you can see there, they have a sieving effect and they manage LDL particles access to the wall. So the glycocalyx is part of whether or not you'll have a problem. Second is the endothelial. The so that's the first step. So, so the first step, you need to damage your glycocalyx. That's the first step of heart disease. Single cell layer that forms the inside uh, edge of your artery wall. And this is a single cell layer. And particles can come across the cells through a managed process. And they can leak between the cells. So here's another couple of ways that the particles can get into the wall. And we'll go through that. And then you've got your proteoglycans, structures inside the artery wall, and they can trap LDL particles, whereupon they become oxidized, they're broken up. And if you have too many of them getting trapped, you can build up cholesterol into foam cells and plaques. So whether or not these things grab a lot of particles also decides whether your LDL particles are a problem. As if that wasn't enough, there's a fourth hugely important one, and that's HDL efflux. So your HDL lipoproteins go into the wall, they pick up any problematic cholesterol that gets left over in here, and they magically take it back out again into the circulation and back to the liver. So it is magic. And uh, they don't talk about it much, the drug guys, because the drugs to help HDL failed. Therefore, HDL is persona non grata pretty much. You'll hear a lot of people in reports, oh, high HDL doesn't necessarily help you. And some people with high HDL have disease. And you'll hear all this anti-HDL rhetoric. And the reason is the drugs didn't work. So it's just a competitive threat, <laughs> basically. <laughs> so anyway, there's the four layers. One, two, three, four. Evolutionary wonder. We want to know what governs, determines, mediates, or influences this three-layer leakage and the efflux down here. Because if you don't know what's going on here, you're almost wasting our time looking at the numbers, because that's the least of it. 
extra numbers up here, more blah, blah, blah. That's the least of it. It is what's happening in this system. So first the glycocalyx, and here it is, an electron microscope image. Very, very narrow. It's a couple of hundred nanometers. Uh, there is a barrier layer that, that goes beyond it, but it's, it's a very tiny structure of hairs. And here's a paper I did, dug up, 2008. Arterial glycocalyx dysfunction is the first step in the atherothrombotic process. The first step. That's interesting, because I always thought it was the particles go into your wall, and that's the first step. Well, no. Interesting paper. See the result of that. So looking a little closer, here's the hairs of the glycocalyx. The LDLs tend to be managed in some manner they don't fully understand to limit access to the endothelial cell. That's in good shape. And here's one that's in a mess, right? This guy's smoking maybe, drinking Coca-Cola. His glycocalyx has gone to hell altogether. And here is where leakage and also the recruitment of inflammatory molecules, monocytes, and all kinds of issues begin to happen on that inner wall when you destroy your glycocalyx. Here's one team that did a study on it, and they said, well, let's take in a Petri dish endothelial cells all together and try and damage this structure and see how much more LDL internalizes into the cells. If we damage it, more LDL should get in there, right? And they found that it did. When they damaged it with neuromama days, you had nearly 10 times as much LDL went into the cell. So that appears to be what happens when you screw your glycocalyx. They used cationized ferritin, which they knew was a much stronger damage agent, and they verified that this structure had gone down to 5% or less of its original. So they damaged the hell out of it. And they got 20 times more LDL to get internalized in the cells. Now this is not in a human, but it's illustrating a point of principle. In general, the papers for damaging the glycocalyx that I've pulled out, high sugar, sad diets, high... Okay, I'm gonna stop it here because uh, I don't have any time. I need to go to work, uh, okay? So, basically, what he explains here, there's a couple of steps for a heart disease. It's, it's not just fucking your LDL particles, poof, goes into your artery wall, okay? There's steps to it. You need to damage your glycocalyx, then you need to damage your uh, cholesterol, your fats, your LDLs, your whatever. You need to damage that, and, and, and only then will it enter your fucking artery okay the glycocalyx layer it uh, it regenerates itself every six to eight hours something like that okay what does a person do every six to eight hours eats eats what eats sugar carbs fiber which th the three of these things the, the fiber they, they we can turn it in they, they uh, the, this is the same thing the simple sugars um the complex sugars the uh, uh the carbs the complex carbs and the fiber these are the same thing they digest they we can make uh, from fiber we can make carbs and from carbs we can make sugars and from sugars we can make alcohol and that's why people can make alcohol from toilet paper okay so this is the same thing a plant is sugar basically okay so the person eats that shit and he and let's say he smokes and then he drinks cola and then before the smoke and the cola he had like rice beans cooked fucking meat and you know processed fat damaged cholesterol okay so there are a lot of steps to to this okay and you should take it into consideration you dig my nig now okay so we're getting through to the end. I want to clap, clap a little for you guys and for moi. But cow farts will lead us into the end of the world, no? We will save the world by monocropping, uh, monocropping vegetables, right? This is what the, the, the vegan community, the elites, the cults want to tell you, right? That we're going to save the world with a vegan diet and whatever. Monocropping damages the natu natural mineral and bacterial properties of the soil. Monocrop monocropping, what is monocropping? Um, it is when you take a large portion of land and then you, um, and then you um, grow the same fucking plant all over it okay this is unnatural mother nature mother nature does not agree with this okay you can go try, try and, and and grow eight 
tomato bushes one after the other uh, one near the other one okay in a jungle just try and do that okay one of them is gonna get infested by some bug the other ones too okay modern nature likes um um variety okay monocropping kills the soil the uh, the soil dependent animals that live in sync in synchronization with the soil okay um monocropping uses synthetic fertilizer uh, fertilizers and pesticides that are processed from petroleum okay you know that that um natural resource that we are running out of okay vegans okay and also i want to add um how about all those planes and fly around the world and and uh, just to give you um plants that won't grow in your season in your area uh, seasonally okay and they need to bring you these fruits and vegetables your food they need to bring it to you by using planes you know how much fuel planes use do you know about the uh, whatever pollution whatever they want to try that's the same things you are um, crying about. That's the same things you are crying about. These are the same things. Versus, okay, holistic animal farming gives back fertility, minerals, natural fertilizer, fertilizers, and natural cycle. It gives back to the soil. These animals are the soil. Whoever grows animals here and grows them in some sort of place, they will notice that the earth is actually fucking growing. The earth is growing. What is the earth? Earth is dead animals, dead plants, poop, pee, okay, rain, um, diffu uh, diffused, di not diffused, the whatever, you know, um, uh, stones, rocks, minerals, whatever that get, um, um, get washed away into the earth with the rain or with whatever is happening up there. Holistic farming does not damage the living animals uh, dependent on the soil, okay? We don't use no fertilizers and no pesticides, okay? We learned today that plants already have their natural pesticides, okay? And then what do you you do to monocrop, monocrop grow these plants? You add more pesticides, Chem chemically um processed pesticides from petroleum okay and then you eat that shit no 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 you just you just wash the fruit in some tap water before you eat it that's gonna help yeah sure so holistic farming does not damage the living animals uh, dependent on the soil and mother nature loves diversity okay she doesn't like monocropping okay Meat is not murder, okay? Meat is not murder, okay? You understand now? Is that clear? Capish Mi hai capito? Helpful tips to destroy the dissonance people have with eating raw foods. You have deep, you need to understand this, folks. You have a deep dissonance in your brain. I will give you one example. I work at a place with a lot of people and I eat my raw meat. When I started eating raw meat, I was just eating just, you know, fresh minced meat from the um, butchery or whatever. And I was eating, uh, I was eating this uh, with some yogurt, some whatever. And people would look at me and, and before they say uh, bon appetit, before they even say something good, they, they, they will ask you uh, how many worms do you have, parasites, when are you gonna die, how sick you are, how smelly you are, fucking, fucking idiots, man. Um, fucking assholes yeah so um you have a uh, big dissonance so people would tell me this about the fresh meat and then i would take like a big chunk of meat i would i would um lay it in salt for like a half hour or one hour and then i would just wash it off put, uh, like put it in a string like tie it up in a string and hanging out at five degrees centigrade in a mini fridge okay for a month you open that fridge and it smells like a dead cat okay I like that smell, my dog likes that smell, and you also like that smell, but only when you're not aware of it, and it's stupid, and I brought that piece, I cut it up into pieces, and I brought the, those pieces 
into wor uh, to work, you know? And people were like, whoa, what is this? Can I try? Mm, smells good, dead cat. What the fuck? Smells good. Huh? Oh, wow, tastes so good. You can munch on these all day. How did you make them? Oh, I just took the fresh meat that you told me I'm gonna die from and hung it in my fr in a fresh air for five uh, for a month. Okay, for a month. And then it got decomposed. Okay? And then you, you now you're eating and this is okay. And the fresh meat, that's that's like no, that's no. So you have a you have a big dissonance in your fucking brain. Okay, and you need to understand it. So for basic bitches, Asians, religious folks, okay, we have raw fish. You like your sashimi, you like your fucking uh, fucking um sushi and shit. Drop the sushi, drop the rice, drop all the other shit, please. Just eat raw fish, sashimi. Just eat sashimi. But please uh, um, 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 bring the fish from a fresh water fish. Like, a, not fresh water. I, 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 that's a mistake I made. It. I made um, not fresh water, um, wild fish, wild caught fish, okay? Not lab grown Norwegian salmon or whatever or herring. Not, none of that. Please go to a fisherman, pay him your cash okay give him your money and um, give him your money and uh, buy some fresh fish and religious folks you also or, or russians you also like salted raw fish okay be careful with the salt maybe one day you will realize what it is doing to your flavorings adding sour yogurt sheep or goat yogurt which is sour right or butter to raw beef in the same bite okay as I was eating today, imagine th there wasn't any yolks on it, okay? It's just raw minced meat, okay? If you add, if you add a sour, something sour, sour yogurt, sour cheese, whatever, something uh, with the same bite, it feels holistic. It feel, you can actually swallow it a lot better. It feels, it, it feels normal because it's meat and acid and it's what's supposed to be in here, okay? So it feels normal. Uh, try it out. Try it out. I, I, I guarantee you that you won't just eat minced meat in your first try. Okay, so add add that sour uh, thingy. Raw organs can be m m met with a small initial bite to understand the rich taste. Okay, um, I ate some uh, raw beef liver today uh, in in like uh, kind of big chunks. Okay, big for you. Try it. A little bit, a little bit, okay? It's it's supposed to be sweet because the glucose in the liver is supposed to be a little sweet. It's supposed to be, after a few days, it gets a little sour because the glucose turns into lactic acid, whatever. Just eat a little bit, just eat a little bit. Don't get the whole bite in because your brain is a baby. You don't eat with her, okay? You don't eat with her. She has actually more neurons than here. This brain, the et etric, etric, nervous system okay it has more neurons than your brain okay this is supposed to say to you something okay this is the first brain this is not the first this is the second brain this is the first brain okay this is your chemical this is your uh, chemical center happiness plant okay this is her okay respect her please and eat with her ask her okay don't ask him or him don't eat with them, okay? Th these are babies, okay? <clears throat> In raw eggs, free range eggs, please. Only free range. Don't buy pasteurized milk from big companies and shit, please. And don't b buy eggs that are uh, that the chickens or chicks were um, raised in cages and shit. Okay, free range, please. If, if you look here, if you don't have, a, if you're a loser, man, and you can't fucking and you can't fucking uh, really know how to bring true change into this world, okay, true good change into this world, please pay your money at least to people who do, okay, so please buy free range chicken eggs, okay, and raw milk from your local farm, from the dude that actually take care of and loves his animals, okay, don't accept good taste after eating pizzas, sauces, and other drugs, this is exactly what I said about salt, why do I do not eat, why don't I eat salt, because salt ruins tastes for me, if you eat salt, and then yolks are salty, 
okay but it's only salty for me it's not salty for someone who eats a gram or two or three or four of salt every fucking day okay there's enough salt in these things okay salt ruins the taste and sauces and pizzas and other drugs okay don't be expecting to use heroin and then going to uh, smoke in a joint and, and, and expect to uh, feel something out of it okay as you felt with the heroin okay same logic here you can always add to the raw beef some onion juice or hot pepper juice you know the juice you get from uh, hot peppers or, or just squeeze some onions you get the juice from them you can mix it up with the raw meat as, as a beginning you know just to help your dissonance again because you eat with him you ask him what's tasty mm, tasty yes good tasty yeah good yeah good tasty good yeah that's why what you do okay uh, don't push it with the salt salt enables the gag reflex and all we really talked about salt being a drug okay make dishes uh, dishes with diverse tastes for example raw beef and yolks like steak tartare like i made today raw beef and raw liver like i made today okay or raw beef and some raw fish some sashimi on the side you know some yogurt some i don't know some party uh, caviar enough said caviar speaks for itself nobody has an argument with caviar raw milk enough said lactose intolerant people this is for you raw milk you are not you're not lactose intolerant you are pasteurized milk intolerant you are missing an enzyme or a germ in that milk that helps you digest that lactose intolerant this is what intolerant you are <clears throat> goat fat sheep fat enough said okay if anybody ever smelled some goat fat or sheep fat i don't need to explain anything to you you can always have a rare burger or a rare steak blue rare okay um uh, don't make a fool of yourselves okay throw the garbage out of your fridge okay the next time you're gonna open that fridge i know what's gonna happen and you know what's gonna happen okay we are talking about a rehab the hardest you will probably have okay unless you're using heroin or something like that and you got your rehab uh, got, got out of there this is will be this will be the hardest rehab you probably have believe me i had a harder i had a harder time quitting carbs um fiber and sugars than cigarettes okay than drugs i i i used to live on the streets my boys how about that and i used to take drugs and these drugs were easier to quit than fiber sugars and carbs and this is why it is also important to know that through the findings of natasha campbell mcbride we're going to talk about her later and the western a price foundation and other organization that studied how mental problems begin in the digest in the digestive tract they found that there are certain bacteria molds yeasts that literally live and parasites actually like worms this big you can check it um bart k had like a month ago or two months ago had an interview on his channel with a girl about parasites she had like this fucking big worms in her in intestine okay that that made that uh, that created schizophrenic episodes for her paranoia schizophrenia huh um the tiredness whatever and until she got rid of those okay she would have those um, things. So just imagine. That's, just imagine what the fuck could live here and control you. Okay. Uh, yeast that literally live inside people's digest digestive tracts and can, in some sense, control your brain with chemical signals. Okay. They notice that there are certain yeasts that are disbalanced in patients that suffer from attention problems, schizophrenia, autism, and turn certain carbs, rice, bread etc into an opioid like substance heroin this is the sentence above is related to parents that give their children cookies so that they can drool some saliva in front of the television okay you have autistic children or children with fucking problems attention pro whatever problems okay and you just oh whatever yeah yeah just just get yeah yeah get, get your ice cream yeah get, get, get the tv and then just yeah um, um, uh, eating and getting stupider you great parents you're great fucking parents i love him 
fucking idiots after these finding findings they found that even normal people without obvious mental problems had these in their digestive tract okay which begs the question what other methods do th these things use to control your mind hmm this is for all the people that that are oh is that rice that i'm smelling bruh eat like this for a couple of months and that Oh, is that rice that I'm smelling? It, it's gonna turn to. Is somebody did somebody put see, plants into boiling water? That's what you're gonna smell when you get rid of those parasites. Parasites, mind controlling fucking parasites and bacteria. Okay, that you have in your fucking gut that tell you what is tasty, what is good, when you when you should eat. Okay, fucked up, man. Fucked up. Fucked up, and you thought like uh, the mushroom that controls ants and 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 tells them to go on to a high plant where there's like sun, and then it kills them and grows out of their fucking brain. You thought that was like far fetched. <laughs> oh yeah, these findings are in relation to all people that think you should eat plants, seeds, and carbs. Okay, these foods, those are food for bacteria, yeast, and fungi, fungi. Okay. In nature, we learned about this today. The things that directly eat fiber, carbs, and sugars, okay, are bacteria, yeast, and fungi, fungi, okay? Okay, these are the direct eating things, okay? If you eat these things, you will make a, ho a hot and cozy home for these parasites in your gut. The gut of an apex predator that is supposed to be pretty much sterile uh, compared to uh, herbivores. Please keep this in mind while you are in rehab. Please keep this in mind. This is not a funny thing to... Hey, is this... Um, okay, whatever. Uh, a little fail here. Please spread this info to all relevant folk, okay? Please to any person with any type of pain, okay? We got through this in the be beginning of the... Whatever, please spread this video. Spread this video. Even if the even if you know the person, he will watch the three hour uh, timeline and he's what three hours? You want me to learn something for three hours? Are you fucking crazy? Ho ho ho! I'm so smart. I'm not gonna learn. I'm gonna do exactly the opposite of what a smart person should do, and I'm gonna ignore the information while feeling smart about it. Fucking dysfunctional people, man. Headaches, joint pain, bone, bone pain, inflammation, dry skin, hair problems, yeast or fungal issues, smelly feet, or smelly uh, body sweat, odor, stomach aches, back pain, period pain, digestion problems, heartburn, hemorrhoids, ADHD, sleeping problems, problems with waking up, heart problems, paranoia or fears, problems with repeating the same mistakes over and over, memory problems, problems with motor skills, sick every year, okay, people that are sick every year, energy problems, feeling tired, abandonment issues, depression, manias, manias, depressions, rep uh, reproductive problems, social relationship problems, vitamin or mineral general deficiency, eyesight problems, okay, problems with getting fat, problems with being too thin, autoimmune problems, and mental health problems, okay? All the respect to you, boys and girls, thank you, thank you so very fucking much to, uh, uh, for listening to me, to, uh, for accepting me, for whatever, and for the angle, we will now mention the recommended folk. Okay, this is the first site. Okay, I will give you a little tour of that site for a second. Rivero, okay, meet it, it was called meetrx.com. Now it's called Rivero, okay, and I'm gonna show this site to you right now. Okay, so uh, this is hey, This is the site, okay, this is the site of Dr. Sean Baker, you go here to uh, something diet, okay, and then you have success stories, and then in the success stories, you have categories, success stories, categories, okay, and then you have your cancers, and you have your asthma, and you have your allergies, and you have your brain whatever, and you have your Crohn's disease, and you have your digestion, and you have your dental health, and you have your gout, and you have your hearing, and whatever, bros, the list goes on and on, this, these are categor categories of disease that people actually made better via eating what? Cooked meat.
This is cooked meat. This is not raw meat. This is cooked meat. And this is what it heals. Okay? Stay away from plants. Stay away from the other shits that you eat. That you're not supposed to eat. Okay? Please. So, Rivero. Rivero.com. Mira Rex, it's a site by Dr. Sean Baker. We're gonna talk about him right now. No, later. Okay. Natasha Campbell McBride, a neurosurgeon that had an autistic, uh, an autistic child that healed via diet. Okay. She's a neurosurgeon, somebody who actually knows something about the nervous system. And then she had a child with autism and she realized she doesn't know nothing about the nervous system. Okay. So she got like two, uh, whatever high PhDs in nutrition and, um, and she realized it's the diet she put her son on her protocol which is basically the carnivore diet okay she put her son on her protocol and um he healed he's a normal guy car job wife you know so kids so uh yeah autism is reversible and all mental disease is reverse reversible okay especially if you catch it at a young age it's totally reversible okay listen to this uh, lady right here okay the best mother you will ever listen to listen to her whatever uh, she has a book gotten uh, psychology syndrome um i'm gonna talk about it later dr sean baker all of these people you can find on youtube whatever dr shen sean baker okay a combat surgeon that switched to an only meat diet cooked meat with spectacular results i don't know about cooked meat because i see videos of him like uh putting this thick of a steak into like an uh 3000 degree oven grill whatever he just sears it for like half a minute each side and then he cuts it open and it's still pink and it has blood from the inside so i don't know sean i don't know i don't know maybe you want to switch to the raw maybe you want to want to kick your fears that google inserted in you via germ theory so this is a grandpa 58 year old grandpa he actually um uh, he broke the world record in um in uh, rowing or whatever and when he was like 20 or 30 and he never broke that record until he started the carnivore diet when he was 50 what 50 years old something like that and at 54 he actually broke his record his own world record okay it's supposed to say something to you sally fallon morel nutritionist from the western a price foundation with a very interesting with a very interesting presentations um the whole western a price foundation is they they they, they are all interesting people uh, they they are all people you should listen to okay and she has a cookbook i don't remember uh, how it's called um, uh, nourishing tradition i don't know something like that great cookbook please uh, listen to these people bart k okay this is the top fucking guy we have here okay on this list like i i should have mentioned him first but ladies first or whatever okay academia professor that hung his lab coat after realizing the corruption in the nutrition business science okay and the, the guy we talked about before um one of the most important people here he is also like 50 years old uh, looking great bart looking great once he had a, a, a q a session on his uh, on his channel and and then i commented about the pottinger's cat experiments i said how is this how 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 is it um how is it that these animals are thriving on raw meat but we when we have the same if not even more predatory digestive tracts we don't we we need to eat cooked meat like what's your logic behind that and he's like he's such he's such a robot man he's such a he's like humans are not cuts and i'm like what do you mean humans like <laughs> but we have the same digestive system okay good cats are not lions or you know you know what cats are not wolves but they thrive from the same food bart what do you mean cats are not humans yeah i understand but, but what magical mechanism do we have in our body that brings the cooked meat back to life you know what i'm saying bart you know what i'm saying if you get burns on your hand if you take your hand and put it into fire okay you get burns what does happen to your hand does it regenerate does it 
what your body need to needs to fucking replace the dead cell he needs to take all of these dead bodies and digest them into something else so it can clear up and whatever and and bring new cells there and grow something new right so all of this fucking garbage work that it does because you had damage you do that damage to your food and then you eat it logical you know bart so I love this guy. I love this guy. One of the smartest fucking uh, a real man. That's that's for sure. Smartest fucking uh, guys up here on this um, presentation, <clears throat> and as I know of, okay. And uh, yeah, he's he's my favorite nerd. Okay, he's my favorite. He's really robotic. His re cats are not humans. Okay, he's really robotic, but um, I love him, and you should love him too. Okay. And I sure, I'm sure he loves uh, everybody too, or tries to, at least. He has a good heart. He's a good guy. Uh, Elliot Overton, a nutritional therapist and MD, <clears throat> medical doctor that has amazing videos on nutrition and health, especially about supplements. He has a lot of clients that go to the cooked meat diet. I will mention this again. Cooked meat diet, okay? And they have, cons some of them have constipation or... Um, the runs for like a month or something and they can't do nothing about it so he figured out or he treated his, his patients or treats his patients with um high doses of vitamin b for like a month you need to take because to digest things to digest fat you need cholesterol to digest to to digest fat you need b vitamins you need a whatever you need uh, nothing comes separated yeah you need it holistically so holistically you need to be healthy okay uh, makes sense so uh if you have any constipation if you go on a cooked meat diet and you have any constipation and whatever uh, please check out his channel okay you just need to take a high vitamin dose for like a week or two and then you're golden you just take off the fucking supplements and don't use them anymore like you should tom barnett <laughs> ozzy 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 oi 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 tom barnett a guy who runs for president in australia eats raw has amazing interviews on his channel okay you should check out this fucking guy right here okay okay a smart smart ass man smart ass really holistic guy you should listen to what he says about diet and health and whatever he's on he's on the he's synchronized with the truth okay with the laws of truth dr paul saladino doctor that uh, treats chronic disease and his pa uh, and his patients with the carnivore diet we talked about him here um in the last couple of months he was he's adding carbs to his diet it's controversial or whatever he's on the right path okay Ivor Cummins, an engineer from Top Class Irish Heart Disease Organization, he will explain to you everything about cholesterol and heart disease, okay? This is this guy, we saw him with his uh, presentation about cholesterol and the mechanisms be mechanis behind uh, heart disease. Samir Dosanni, I don't know if he's Arab or Indian, a nutritional guide and a PhD student that lectures on the diet thoroughly, okay? This is the guy, has a YouTube channel, great fucking videos, great fucking interviews. Okay. Oh, vegan phobic for simple folk that want a simple explanation. Okay, this is this guy, has a YouTube channel called Vegan Phobic. You can check it out. Every video of his makes me smile without exception. Every video of his makes me smile. I love this guy. He's a simple guy. He's an honest guy. Um, you know, except that red hat that he's wearing right there. Uh, I, I understand man you want um you want uh, a, a great tribe I understand that feeling but the 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 elite are psychos man there's no one person that wants to rule the world and tell everybody how to live and who is sick and who can be rich and who can go through this invisible barrier of mine okay legally and who can grow what plant and who can uh, take what it's substance they want into their fucking god-given biological body okay the, these are all psychos man 
I, ho I hope you're not voting for anybody. Swearage for simple folk that want a simple explanation. Look at this guy right here. Look at this man. A, a very controversial guy. No, uh, not, not a lot of people, um, you know, can follow him. Once you understand him, he's a totally cool guy. Good heart. Um, good brains. Uh, he's uh, sometimes he's... he's um, um his jokes are like dark and sometimes they're um i remember the word but whatever man whatever a good guy you should watch his channel he has tons of interviews with people ex-vegans and whatever he has a good documentary a documentary that he made called the nwo diet the new world order diet please watch this documentary of his and Juliet Autumn for simple folk that want a simple explanation, okay, from a female, okay, she is also a carnivore diet proponent, and um, yeah, you can check her out. Personal book recommendation, like, let's get through this shit real quick right here, okay, New the book that started it all, Nutritional and Physical Degeneration, Western A Prize, this is this book right here, okay, um, this is a guy that went to the, uh, the most isolated tribe, I I talked about him in, uh, somewhere in the video. He went to the almost isolated uh, tribes and tried to realize why do uh, why are they so fucking healthy without any fucking gum disease, teeth disease, heart disease, digestion di disease, whatever disease, mental disease. Okay, why are they so happy, energetic, and thriving? Okay, and why every woman there gives birth to like ten or eight children or whatever? Okay, this is the book. You should read it. There's examples there of people. I told you, I told you. Gut and Physiology Syndrome. Now, I don't have this book here. You know why I don't have this book here? This is a book by Natasha Campbell McBride that explains how to heal autism in children. I gave this book to a father that has an autistic child, a young autistic child that he can save, okay? Unless he... Unless he gets gets to uh to his like late uh, late uh, late twenties, okay, then you can't really do anything. The damage is set, as they say, okay. So I gave him this book, and you know what he did? Squat. He did nothing, nothing. He did nothing for his fucking autistic kid. Somebody gave him a solution. Just try this. Just try it. What did he do? He didn't even read the fucking book. He didn't even return it to me. Uh, this exactly reflects the person's personality and personality he doesn't care about kids he doesn't care about himself first of all because to care about some something else you need to care about yourself to give respect you need self-respect okay you it doesn't work that way it doesn't work the other way around you can't you can you can act like you're giving respect to somebody but if you didn't do that thing you don't know what the fuck does he have to go through. You can't really respect him. That's what I'm saying. And he can't respect his son. He can yell. He can, Try saying that to him. <clears throat> try saying that to him. That you are a, 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 fucking, a fucking witch of a fucking father. Try saying that to him. He will pull out a knife on you. Right? No, I'm the best father in the world. Really? Show it to me. Show it. Prove it with your fucking actions, man. Fucking castrated pieces of shit. We want to live. Anginus Wonder Plans. This is this book right here. It doesn't have any cover because um, this is what um, this is my style. Doesn't have any cover. Okay, and this is a guy Anginus Wonder Plans. Some say he's an actor. Some say he's the guru, uh, the best guru in the world. Uh, in this book, particularly, he particularly woo, he talks about um, his stepson or his real son that got into an accident. And, and 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 he was like uh, half paralyzed uh, paralyzed in half his body and the doctors told him no it hasn't he has no chance whatever blah 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 lied to him and um so he would sn snuck, uh, sneak into the hospital and like give his son with like raw meat and raw honey and he would mix it up and give this to his son okay because this actually heals them and because the hospital would ever wouldn't ever let you in with raw meat or raw milk into to the hospital okay a big point right there so and he replaced his like um his injection bottles with like with like food and, and stuff a uh, great guy he he did experiments on animals he had autism himself he claims that um and that he healed from with the raw day he almost fucking died in a forest uh, something 
you should hear his story, whatever, whatever. Raw meaty bones, okay? Please, people, please save your cats, save your dogs, stop fucking giving them the chips from the veterinarian, okay? The fucking geek food that they invented in the lab and said to you, oh, this is better than mother nature, okay? No, nothing is better than mother nature. We are autistic compared to creation, okay? Nothing is better than creation itself. Nothing is better or more important than the truth, okay? Please save your cats, save your dogs. Give him raw midi bones, my... Okay, now we have The Vegetarian Myth by Lear Keith, one of my favorite books. This is Lear Keith, the, the lady we talked about at the beginning of the presentation. Okay, The Vegetarian Myth. Personally, I like the, the best part of this book is like two pages about about how different animals use different drugs in nature, how they actually search for these drugs and shit. I liked it, liked it, liked it. The carnivore diet, Dr. Sean Baker. Okay, Sean Baker. We talked about him like three minutes ago or six minutes ago. I don't know. Carnivore diet. Okay. Good book. Brain, uh, grain, brain. Okay, grain, brain. Grain, brain. So, uh, this is by David uh, Perlmutter and Kristin Lullaborg. This is about grains and your brains, obviously. Eat the yolks, Liz Wolf. Also a cute book, Eat the Yolks. She talks about eating the yolks raw, okay? Which is funny because this is the only thing that she talks about in eating raw. If this, this is good raw, then other, uh, other things aren't. Other things you should kill with um, heat. The salt fix for all the people here who are, who are scared of salt and whatever. Me personally, I don't like salt, okay? But this is a book I read when I did eat salt. A little bit of salt. And don't be scared of salt, okay? Don't be scared of salt, okay? It ruins the taste. You will Maybe you, you will finally realize what it does to you, to the taste, to whatever. But it's okay. We This book proves that, basically proves that we are uh, made we have some compatibility in our um, kidneys to process salt okay Th two to three grams every day and your kidneys actually keep that salt in until you eat more salt and only then it excretes it so cure tooth decay okay by Remil Nigel Ever Everybody here who has like a tooth decay, ginger virus, uh, holes in their teeth, whatever. Everybody who has children with crooked teeth and whatever. The, 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 this is a really good book, okay, for alternative, um, alternative healing and shit. Don't put, put braces on their teeth, please. There's a, uh, a better method here. Um, they put like a spring inside your mouth that um opens it up whatever it focuses on getting your jaw bigger which is supposed to happen naturally okay instead of pushing your teeth into position okay again thank you for uh, thank you very much for watching and acceptance and your acceptance okay accept and moi the important thing is to be your own researcher and don't listen to any authority. Independent, be independent. Try the things on yourself, okay? You are the, labor the laboratory, okay? You are the geek, okay? You are the scientist. Stop believing that you are dumb and only people who learned from the big book for 10 years and can't give you any other device or unless they get fired only they can tell you what is right and wrong only they know the truth stop fucking believing it learn both sides of the coin okay if any of you tried the vegan diet please try this okay try everything and and uh, get your own conclusions and but really try please try don't be like a fucking loser hey bro i lifted weights yesterday and my my muscle it hurts but I, I i i'm not big as you uh training is bullshit don't be that stupid idiot okay try don't give up really try don't give up on people okay be there for them like a stable rock okay a lot of people oh, i have a headache oh, i'm hurt oh, i'm dizzy i'm sad i'm happy i'm okay they're not stable you will be stable you will be the example okay don't give up on them they're stupid they're dumb 
but don't give up don't give up man you're strong you're a stable rock okay you're a boulder man you're a you're a <laughs> never mind try things on your own meat okay try things for yourself and listen to your stomach okay listen to her please <gasps> por favor please listen to her to, to her to hear to her here and her listen listen here her to try to act to take the first step in the rocky road again don't sit on the in the beginning of the road i believe i don't believe you know don't be that guy please take the first step action and only then understand it you can't um <clears throat> you can't believe and then understand there's no such thing hope to see you all again